extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, and so I was saying. A local woman fighting her homeowners association to the tune of $17,000. We will walk you through what is a big time mess. And they found out their company was shutting down by an email sent over the holiday break. But those workers say they're left with no paychecks, no insurance, no answers. Tonight, we are asking the state if this is legal. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Friday night, we're weather aware for the weekend, that's for sure. Tonight, tracking the possibility of severe storms, even tornadoes, tomorrow. The severe weather is expected to arrive late on Saturday afternoon and into the evening across North Georgia. Meteorologist Samantha Moore joining us now with the very latest. Sam? Your 11 Alive storm trackers are going to be busy as we head in through this weekend and we continue to track that threat for severe storms. Now, as we look out to the west, you can see where all the action has been today along this line, this strong cold front that's moving in through uh, much of Texas, Oklahoma, in through Missouri and Louisiana with a tornado threat is great. In fact, the tornado environment with the shear as well as with the instability is just continuing to get stronger and stronger. And they have a few tornado watches in place through the evening hours. And this is what's heading in our direction tomorrow. So the Storm Prediction Center has been proactive all week long. They're based out of Norman, Oklahoma. They've been proactive in telling us about this risk. And now we have that chance. We have that slight chance for severe Severe storms across the Atlanta metro area and then along the line of Alabama, the Georgia Alabama line, uh, including uh, Troop County here, we have an enhanced chance for significant severe weather, which could be long track tornadoes and gusty damaging winds. Some of those thunderstorm winds could be hurricane force winds. So, coming up, we'll go hour by hour and let you know what those impacts will be and when to expect them. Make sure you receive the latest weather alerts and warnings by downloading the 11 Alive app. You can also check interactive radar and maps anytime for updates on the forecast wherever you may be. Even if your power goes out, let's hope that doesn't happen tomorrow. DeKalb police are looking into a possible kidnapping attempt after a boy said a man tried to grab his arm as he was walking to the bus. The 12 year old's mother spoke to us tonight. Elvin Lopez is here. She says it happened near their home, right? Yeah, that's right, Jeff. Not too far from them. It happened near Latchwood Drive and Post Ridge Trail in Lithonia on Thursday morning. His mom says the boy told police a man jumped out of a car and grabbed him by the arm, but he was able to get away and get on the school bus. As soon as that call came through, my, my heart fell in my stomach. I knew I had been feeling that already. I knew something was definitely wrong. And she says her son told her he was able to swat the man and elbow him. Police are still investigating the incident and checking a ring doorbell video in the neighborhood for any leads. 
Oh, and thank you. Two people now have been arrested, accused of robbing a man and then shooting him and leaving him to die in the woods. Cobb County police say 23-year-old Terrence Marshall and 19-year-old Ontavian Jones are connected to the death of Dwenzel Spence. The victim's body was found in the woods on Queens Mill Road back in, two, in 2016. Investigators believe he was walking to the Five Points Marta station around 4 a.m. and was picked up by two people in a van. They allegedly took him to an ATM and robbed him. Cop police say this case is still under investigation. Topping tonight's speed feed on this Friday night, a police chase leads to a massive crash on the connector during afternoon rush hour. The Georgia State Patrol says a trooper tried to pull over an SUV traveling 100 miles per hour. It was on I-75 near Mount Perrin Road, but the driver just kept on going, then later crashed into five vehicles near Northside Drive. The GSP says the driver got out, then ran. All southbound lanes were shut down for nearly an hour. Only two minor injuries reported in the crash. The suspect, fleet of foot, very quick man apparently. He has not yet been found. Six people end up in the hospital after police say a teen took off in a stolen car. Police say officers spotted the stolen car this morning near Wellborn and Marbit, but the 19-year-old behind the wheel took off. Moments later, police say he crashed into another car on Giles Road, hurting two people. They were taken to the hospital along with the four suspects in the stolen car. Police say the car was stolen earlier during a home invasion that happened in Rockdale. Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York City, in Atlanta right now, campaigning with Stacey Abrams' Fair Fight Initiative. This was his first time campaigning in Atlanta. And one of the things he talked about was voter suppression. Make no mistake, voter suppression remains a very big problem. And if it wasn't for Stacey Abrams, who would be your governor today, we would get that. Tonight at 9, we're looking into efforts to change the law when it comes to voter roll purges in the state of Georgia. A Powder Springs woman is fighting her HOA, her homeowners association, after being hit with a $17,000 fine. Pat Kramer has lived in this home, the same one, for about 13 years now, but she says when a new management company took over a year and a half ago, she started getting letters about things that it thought weren't right with her property. She tells our Caitlin Ross there's no way she can possibly afford to pay that fine. First, the HOA told her her trash cans couldn't be visible from the street. You have to turn your head so far over like this to see it for the second that you are passing my house. So she moved them inside. Which is very hard to get them in and out. Then the problem was her hose. It was, you know, all wrapped up. So it really didn't look bad. Then it was her lawn art. Can't have those. Then they wanted her to power wash her house and sweep up her driveway. She says she didn't fight them on it. They are the laws, laws that they've written, and I have the documents and all that. But when she didn't get it done fast enough, she got late fees on top of late fees, $25 a day for each infraction. She tried to plead for mercy. And they never return calls, never. I called them for a year, and no one would call me back. 11 Alive called and emailed all-in-one community management, too, but never heard back. She says the whole thing has been so frustrating. These are things that are so incidental, they're not important. They're asinine, and you're charging me $17,000? Pat says she has $7,000 to her name, and there's no way she can ever pay the fine. Well, it's just insane. It's, it's purely insane, and I, you know, there's nothing I can do. Kramer was able to get an attorney through legal aid, but they basically told her that it's the right of the HOA to find her based on the bylaws of the community, even if, even if those bylaws don't make sense to her. This isn't, though, just a problem for Pat. There are hundreds of people just like her in the state fighting their HOAs. We're taking a look at the bigger picture tonight at 9. The flu and vaping illnesses have very similar symptoms, and that is creating uh, problems for doctors as they make a diagnosis. We are connecting the dots. And don't forget, as always, we are streaming right now on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. Please subscribe and join the conversation. Let us know what you think about these stories. There's more 11 Alive news in prime time straight ahead. Channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Mom. Where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt?
Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make, call me, but I stay in. A local brewery coming up with a way to curb human trafficking in Metro Atlanta, or at least make a contribution. And it has ended up getting a major airline's attention, leading to a new partnership to try to combat the problem. Joe Hankey explains the message behind the Freedom Fighter Brew. Inside Gate City Brewing for founders Brian Borngesser and Pat Rains, their Freedom Fighter IPA is more than a beer. On the front, we have the Freedom Fighter X, and then on the back, you can see we have uh, some facts about ending human trafficking. And there's also a national hotline number people can call or text for help or to report suspected trafficking. It's a difficult topic to talk about. Um, and so bringing awareness and just putting it out there in a way that people can talk about um, was a big key. The beer came to be out of talks with the Roswell Rotary about the Rotary's ongoing efforts to end modern day slavery. Gate City suggested making a beer to help. A short time later, Freedom Fighter joined the brewery's lineup and they began selling six packs, pints and shirts. Then Delta Airlines called. Well, we've had a couple pinch me moments since Gate City has been, uh, been founded and this was definitely one of them. Uh, like Pat said, this was something that we didn't anticipate becoming what it's become. Uh, we did it to raise awareness for a very important issue. Delta wanted to sell Freedom Fighter on flights as part of the airline's ongoing efforts to fight human trafficking, a huge undertaking for a fast-growing but small brewery. We stopped everything that we were to make sure that we could take care of Delta. So there were some conversations that happened about what the volume, what their ask was going to be, what they were going to require from us, and we immediately stopped and looked at the production plan. Gate City's founders say they have always looked for ways to give back to their community, and now they are sending their beer some 30,000 feet up on Delta flights and taking their mission of giving back to new heights. Through Gate City Brewing Company to go and do something that, um, like this Delta partnership, like this beer, and get it out there and the potential to save a life. I mean, it really makes you stop and think. It's a business, um, but it really can be more. So for now, Gate City's beer is on select Delta domestic flights during the month of January for National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month with the sales supporting two Atlanta organizations, Wellspring Living and Out of Darkness. Gate City hopes their partnership can at least become a yearly effort to raise awareness. The NFL trying to address human trafficking as we get closer to the Super Bowl in Miami, the league posting notices on planes, trains and billboards to make sure that people know about the increase in human trafficking that comes along with the event. Anyone flying American Airlines in or out of South Florida will see this message on their flight. We stand with its a penalty against the exploitation and trafficking of vulnerable people. These crimes are illegal. We reported on several sex trafficking stings in Atlanta in the weeks leading up to and after Super Bowl 53 about 12 months ago, and uh, it certainly had an impact. Last year, we saw efforts to fight human trafficking from Delta Airlines. They released an in-flight video ahead of the game of how to spot the signs. Now, as Miami deals with a similar issue, the city has actually created a specialized hotline for tips about suspicious activity around the Super Bowl. It's called 305 Fix Stop. There is, of course, a national human trafficking hotline. That number is at the bottom of your screen right now. 
Your 11 Alive storm trackers will be tracking active weather this weekend. Now tonight is kind of the lull before the storm. We have a few showers out there, but they're fairly light and they're moving from the south to the north. We're starting to see that wind shift and that's going to bring warmer, more moist, moisture laden air. As we look out to our west, we see the leading edge of the first line that's moving across western Alabama. That will increase our rain chances overnight tonight and into the first part of tomorrow. And then we may have some breaks in the action during the day, but this is the line that's going to be heading towards us tomorrow afternoon and evening. We've had tornado watches on it uh, issued throughout the evening hours, and we still have some active tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings. And this will be bringing in that threat for destructive winds and that threat for tornadoes. This is a product called the Tornado Environment product. It's uh, the level that we could see tornadoes forming, and you can see how the bright colors the last few hours have really been increasing. So it's getting into that high range here in Texas and moving into Louisiana and Arkansas. So that is the system that's heading in our direction, and we have that chance for severe storms tomorrow afternoon and evening. In the yellow here is a slight chance in that peachy color. That is an enhanced chance, and it's hash mark because the uh, with lines through it, because the Storm Prediction Center is expecting to have a particularly strong event with potential for long track tornadoes that stay on the ground a long time, as well as hurricane force winds, category one, but winds up around 74 miles per hour or higher with some of these thunderstorms as they roll on in. So on top of that, we're going to have strong sustained winds that could weaken trees and bring trees down or, or limbs down. We'll have those gusts up to 35 miles per hour, and those are non thunderstorm winds. Those are the winds that will accompany the front itself. Looking out over Rome, you can see the winds are indeed picking up. So even if you don't have a tornado in your neighborhood or near your town, you'll likely be experiencing these gusty winds that can be very destructive on their own. These um, these will be lasting for a few hours throughout the day, several hours actually, and just that continued buffering could bring some trees or limbs down. So you may want to secure any loose items that are around your home, light patio furniture, holiday decorations, anything like that. Let's take a look at those temperatures we saw today, 66 degrees after morning low of 50. We should be around 52 and 34 this time of year. So we were 14 degrees above average, and tomorrow we're going to be in the 70s. And we're going to have temperatures well above average well into next week. Even overnight, we're going to be in the 60s with the chances for rain going up in those early morning hours. So scattered evening showers tonight, severe potential tomorrow afternoon and evening. And then after that moves out, the front pulls up stationary and comes back at us with a southwest flow over it for much of next week. And that's when our flood potential goes up. So for tonight, just a few showers, no big deal. Heading out tomorrow, we'll see more widespread rain off and on throughout the morning hours. The winds picking up and that will continue throughout the day. We're expecting to see that line of strong to severe storms moving in across the state line late afternoon, early evening, potentially around dinner time. They continue to move to the east throughout the evening hours bringing in the destructive winds and that threat for tornadoes as well as some very heavy rainfall. Hail threat with this is fairly slim but it is the wind threat that's really going to affect everyone and then if we do see possible tornadoes and they stay on the ground a long time we could see destruction from that. So think about where you're going to seek safe shelter right now and uh, have a plan in place for any uh, thing that may develop. That, by the way, down at the bottom of your screen is our QR code, and that is what you need to do. Aim your phone at this QR code. It'll help you download the 11 Alive app, and you can be prepared for severe weather as it develops tomorrow afternoon or evening, uh, even if you're not near a television set. You can watch our coverage and stay prepared ahead of the storm. So severe storms expected tomorrow afternoon and evening. Come Sunday, we should start to clear it out pretty nicely, but it won't last long. We'll see that rain moving back at us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we'll have to be concerned about flooding at that point. And look how warm those temperatures are. We stay well above average, at least through the middle of next week. The number of people being treated for the flu in Georgia is well above average, but down significantly from the end of 2019. According to new data released by the Department of Health today, five people died and nearly 150 were hospitalized in the first week of the new year. That makes 22 deaths since September. Overall, more than 8,000 cases of the flu were reported in the past week, about half of those in people under age 25. So as the flu spreads, doctors now have a dilemma trying to figure out what is the flu and what is vaping illness. But why are the two so easy to get mixed up and confused? 
Let's connect the dots. According to the experts, the flu and other respiratory viruses look remarkably similar to vaping illness. That includes shortness of breath, night sweats, low oxygen levels, and spots on the lungs picked up by x-ray. Adding to the confusion, people who vape heavily are much more likely to get the flu. So if you show up at the doctor's office with these symptoms and test positive for the flu, they may give you some Tamiflu and send you home. But if you have the vaping illness, you need much more aggressive treatment and hospitalization. Right now, the CDC is telling doctors that if they have a patient who vapes and has flu symptoms, to treat them for both. So we continue to give you an update. This is a program aimed at reducing the offending rate, and it is an issue that many have been talking about, trying to gather to see if there is some possibility to initiate a movement that will certainly be good for all. Uh, working to make sure that these inmates have a smooth re-entry to civilian life, today lawmakers and leaders gathered to discuss a new program. It's happening in Gwinnett County. The Gwinnett Reentry Alliance is working to reduce the reoffending rate by emphasizing education, families, and mental health services. Today at uh, the luncheon, there was the former DeKalb County CEO, Burl Ellis, and former Governor Deal. Both said the state has come a long way, but much more is needed to improve Georgia's prison system. For those who are in our prison system, it is important that they be able, when they are released, to be able to go back into the world without having uh, other offenses being committed and then have to simply go back into the prison system. Uh, I'm very concerned about the issues surrounding mass incarceration. Uh, we have a crisis, and it's a crisis that disproportionately, unfortunately, targets people of color. Governor Deal, very active on that front, had been featured in the Christian Science Monitor and the Wall Street Journal for his work in trying to secure the release of African-American men that have been put in prison. Also trying to help find them jobs. That also has been a major issue in all of this. The Greater Gwinnett Reentry Alliance plans to host events and add more programs focusing on those reentering society after serving time in jail. One of Georgia's most powerful congressmen now apologizing to Democrats for breaking it down as we talk with Chuck Todd of Meet the Press. Did oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy & Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a Salamani was actively planning new attacks 
And he was looking very seriously at our embassies and not just the embassy in Baghdad. But we stopped him and we stopped him quickly and we stopped him cold. President Trump in Ohio last night making the case for killing General Soleimani. His comments came only hours after the House passed a non-binding resolution limiting the president's power to take future military action against Iran. Joining me right now from Washington is NBC's moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd. And Chuck, what do we make of some Republicans like Rand Paul and Mike Lee criticizing the administration for the briefing on Iran? Is the administration going about it the wrong way? Or perhaps they don't even care, right? Well, I don't know if they care or not. I think they've, I would call it a big missed opportunity politically. And I say it this way, you, you know this well, Jeff, during the debate over the Iran nuclear deal, there was quite a few Democrats who ended up voting against the deal um, that President Obama negotiated. The point being is there was a way, and previous administrations had been better about this, they could have brought in a bipartisan group here a bit, the Gang of Eight even, you know, some form of that. Again, Chuck Schumer, much, much more of a hawk when it comes to Iran than any other entity in the Middle East. So I just think it's the way they went about it. It was a bit ham-handed by the administration, and I look at it as a simple missed opportunity where they, they in, in some ways, they pushed potential allies away. And then they put people who normally might have been more supportive of something like this feeling as if there was just no political space for them to help out. So I, I, perhaps we're too polarized and it doesn't matter. But this administration went out of its way not to inform Congress much. Yeah, That's clear. Congressman Doug Collins from Georgia said, and I'm sort of paraphrasing here, the Democrats love terrorists today. Uh, he he backstep on that and, and apologizing about it. But I think it illustrates what you're talking about as far as this polarization, which is yeah. unlike anything that we have really seen. I have to say, when I saw Doug Collins do that, the Congressman, it was just one of those, oh, really? Come on. And I was really heartened that he apologized. Because you know what? That, that, you rarely see that anymore. So, you know... It's funny, a lot of times these guys, you know, we, we, you know, we in the media will surface this stuff and you wonder, are they going to apologize? He did apologize and it wasn't a, he didn't equivocate on it. He just, he said, you know, it was wrong. So he, he, he uh, good for him for at least, you know, stepping up and doing that because so few don't. You know, we put out this hot rhetoric now and it makes you feel good on Twitter because all the people that like you like it and retweet it <laughs> and it reinforces it. Right. And it's just so toxic and terrible. And it does make people, I think, do stupid things in public because they think, oh, this works well in social media. It'll work well in the real world. And you're like, no, it doesn't. Yeah, what, what is Twitter? Maybe one, two percent of the American population and it drives everything. You know, it's been interesting, Jeff. We, we, uh, we, we poll this all the time with Twitter, you know. Only 7% of folks in any of survey we've ever done say they regularly use Twitter. And it's been that way for four years in a row. They've had no growth. Facebook, on the other hand, people are on Facebook. Yeah. The people, they're not on the Twitter. Hey, but I'll tell you what, Twitter's driving the engine of politics and a lot of pop culture in this country, that's for sure. Drives the engine of our conversation some days, that's for it, sure, it sure, which does. is probably too many of our colleagues go on Twitter and provide the fuel. Yeah, no kidding. Meet the Press airs Sunday morning at 10 here on 11 Alive. Chuck, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. So to come, a close call, an officer recovering now after he was hit by a train. A new body camera video shows the moment it happened. Just every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. 
it didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do. We are following some breaking news out of Smyrna right now. Police are investigating a traffic-related death on South Cobb Drive and Mill Pond Road. That's just north of Emory Hospital, Smyrna. We are working to get extra information right now, the details about exactly what happened. Smyrna police say this area will be closed to traffic for the next couple of hours. So if you know anyone who will be driving or moving about in that area, drivers should be looking for an alternate route as those roads will be closed. Well, we're going to be tracking showers tonight, but we're tracking storms tomorrow. I'm meteorologist Samantha Moore and your 11 Alive storm tracking team watching just a few showers move in tonight, but it's going to be overnight. We start to see rain increase. Still no storms expected until we get to tomorrow afternoon, and that's when this very strong line will be on approach. Already this line has produced numerous tornado warnings. They have issued many tornado warnings on them, as well as severe thunderstorm warnings. We have tornado watches in place to the early morning hours, and this line is going to be advancing towards us at a pretty good pace tomorrow. So in this area where they have a moderate risk, and moderate is a four out of five risk for widespread severe storms, this is all going to be moving in our direction. Now expect it to weaken somewhat, but we still are expecting to see some damaging wind gusts out of this, as well as some tornadoes. The best chance here along the Alabama Georgia line. And then we also have that two out of five chance across much of North Georgia into the Atlanta area. And then a one out of five chance in East Georgia in the far eastern third of the state. Now the Storm Prediction Center put some hash marks on here because of the enhanced risk for uh, long track tornadoes as well as hurricane force winds. And on top of those winds that we may see with some of the severe storms, we have a wind advisory in place that could bring trees down, tree limbs down along uh, actual thunderstorms. So coming up, we'll time it out hour by hour and let you know when to expect the worst of the weather. And the weather is impacting some sporting events. Yeah, UGA's basketball game at Auburn is moving up to noon tomorrow. The original game time was set for 6 p.m. Again, this is an impact of the weather. And make sure you receive the very latest weather alerts and the warnings by downloading the 11 Alive app. You can also check interactive radar and maps at any time for updates on the forecast wherever, whenever you need it. Even if your power goes out, let's hope that does not happen.
New on primetime, the FBI is offering a $15,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of a suspect who gunned down a retired Gwinnett County uh, uh, sergeant with the sheriff's department there at the uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts store in Buford. Uh, Felix Cosme's family confirmed this visitation will be held tomorrow evening. His funeral will follow the next day at 3 p.m. at the Buford Chapel of Crowell Brothers Funeral Home and Crematory. The funeral home is picking up the cost for the service. That shooting happened Wednesday night at the O'Reilly store near Buford. Cosme had taken a job there after his retirement. Well, we're getting a look at the moment a Polk County officer was struck by a train. The department releasing this body camera footage. Now, take a look. We've stopped it right before the impact. The train slammed into Officer Andy Anderson, knocking him off the tracks, and he is now out of surgery, recovering from a slew of ailments from broken ribs and elbows, shoulder blade. He is beat up. The incident happened Tuesday while he tried to arrest a man in Rockmart. He heard the train. He just didn't realize how close to the tracks he was. Uh, we, we call that tunnel vision in law enforcement. You get so focused on the task at hand, you forget about your surroundings. So you're talking about the train and the injuries, the arrest, the department still looking for the suspect. Let's get you caught up on some other big stories in your speed feed tonight. Several fishing boats damaged after a fire at a Bass Pro Shop. Crews spent hours trying to contain it last night at the Sugarloaf Mills Mall in Gwinnett County. The mall had to be evacuated for a short time. Investigators still working to figure out what caused that fire. A woman in the hospital fighting for her life after being shot inside her car. She was found inside the vehicle around 4.30 this morning on Glenwood Road in DeKalb County. At last check, she was in, con in critical condition. Officers still haven't given us any information on the suspect. Trying to make a great escape, Alpharetta police sharing this photo of a man accused of breaking into an apartment and then trying to make a quick exit off the balcony. We're told he and another man were using crowbars to open doors at the Avalon yesterday. One of the men is in custody, the other still out there. Every few years, there's a new workout trend, aerobics, uh, shake weights, uh, let's see, Peloton, right? We can go on and on. There's now a brand of gyms using technology to enhance your workout, and they claim it only takes 20 minutes to get in great shape. Is it too good to be true? We'll let you make that determination. Hope Ford went and checked it out. Most of us probably enjoyed watching shows about the future. In 2020, we're still waiting on flying cars, but there is an abundance of tech aimed at improving workouts. Think Peloton, Fitbit, and so on. And now smart gyms are popping up around the country in metro Atlanta. It's pretty cool, actually, and it's sensing what your body can do. This gym has no weights, using only computers to train. Oh, and it's only supposed to take 20 minutes two times a week. Think that's too good to be true? So did the owner of the exercise coach's Dunwoody location, before his wife tried it out. We kind of poo-pooed it a little bit up front. And you really get a workout in 20 minutes, and, and she tried it, and she did. Another early naysayer, a head fitness trainer at the gym, Cameron Lowe. Come on, you can't do that. You're cramming in being at the gym for an hour in the matter of 20 minutes. Lowe has a degree in exercise science and changed his mind after researching the machines. The clients enter a unique code which stores their information. The machine adjusts in real time to increase or decrease resistance. Basically, you're using your max amount of effort for the entire workout. Maximizes what exercise is all about, which is efficiency. New client Jill Wells worked on multiple machines. Abs and leg press and pull down. And says a shorter workout time is the best part. I know that I'm doing the most for me, whereas if I were doing it on my own, I probably wouldn't work as hard. I gave it a try as Our well using the leg press. The goal, keep your legs steady, controlled, not pushing too hard or not hard enough. Your movement is tracked by that yellow line, which you're supposed to keep in the green zone. And yeah, it was tough, and I could feel the burn. Oh, oh there it is. Yep, there it is. Will it replace traditional gyms? Who knows? But many people will always crave innovation and shorter workouts. And unlike traditional gyms, this one is small, has trainers and appointments at the Dunwoody location. One to two people will work out at a time or a group of up to four people with a trainer. A company sends an email during the holiday break telling workers not to come back. Now nearly a thousand people are out of a job.
I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We've been telling you this week about our severe weather threat for Saturday. These storms with the threat for damaging winds and possible tornadoes are most likely in the afternoon and evening hours on Saturday. This is at the same time as our broadcast of the NFL playoff game between the 49ers and the Vikings. So here's our plan. If tornado warnings are issued, we will need to break into the game to deliver life-saving information for those people in the path of the storm. But we plan to do a split screen that will show our weather coverage on one side of the screen and the football game on the other side of the screen in order to alert you of the storms. We will also utilize WATL, also 11alive.com, the 11 Alive app, and our YouTube channel for additional severe weather coverage. We will be very mindful of your desire to see the game while also passing along severe weather information at the same time. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers are committed to keeping your family safe. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the No, 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 You kill a super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got them. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chester. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, five to seven AM. Only on eleven alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the rush block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with... Boeing is apologizing after releasing documents detailing internal messages by employees about the embattled 737 MAX. In the messages, employees talked about misleading regular regulators about problems with Boeing's MAX simulators in 2017 and in 2018. In one exchange, an employee told a colleague they wouldn't let their own family ride on a 737 MAX. Here's Glenn Farley from our sister station in Seattle. When the first 737 MAX took off to begin flight testing, the idea was to deliver to the airlines a plane that would fly and handle just like the previous model that wouldn't require much extra training. But these documents released by Boeing talk a lot about the difficult process of getting there, 
and exchanges of emails and text messages between pilots and engineers. The names have been redacted, but one from 2017 goes like this. I'm putting out fires with the blank person who suddenly thinks they need simulator training to fly the MAX. Arr! Ironically, this week, Boeing did an about-face and says it wants to have pilots complete MAX-specific simulator training for when the grounded jet flies again. In another exchange, raising concerns, I don't know how to refer to the very, very few of us on the program who are interested in only the truth, but it's mostly depressing it's been so few. The regulators mention often with sentiments like, I'm not hopeful, the FAA inspector was briefed by blank, and it was negative from the get-go, whining about the number of DRs, not Boeing quality, etc. But this is what happens when people fold when they should be standing firm. Integrity should not be cast aside when pressured. So is this just how the sausage is made or something more troubling? You think, in retrospect, it was a mistake to not inform pilots of the existence of the MCAS system? We made some mistakes. This exchange in the House Transportation Committee, which grilled now ousted Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg in late October. The documents again putting Boeing's credibility on the line. In a statement, the company says, We regret the content of these communications and apologize to the FAA, Congress, and our airline customers and to the flying public for them. The language used in these communications and some of the sentiments they express are inconsistent with Boeing's values, and the company is taking appropriate action in response. We're continuing to watch just a few showers move in tonight, but we're preparing for the severe storms we'll likely see tomorrow. So just a few nuisance showers out there, especially on the east side of town and eastern Georgia tonight. But we're seeing a wider band of moderate rain. This will move in overnight, so we'll start to hear more showers on the rooftop overnight. That will continue throughout tomorrow, and we'll notice the winds really picking up as we head out the door tomorrow morning because this strong line of storms is approaching us, and even at this time of night, it has numerous severe warnings on it, including a couple tornado warnings here in uh, the Ozarks of Arkansas. And so we'll continue to see this line of severe storms move uh, in our direction overnight and in through the day tomorrow. So that's where they have an enhanced chance, a four out of five chance of seeing storms tonight, where you see that red color, that bullseye here across the Arklatex and stretching over to the Mississippi River Valley. And this whole thing advances in our direction in the next 24 hours, or actually more like 18 hours now. So by tomorrow afternoon, we'll have that risk. In the yellow here, you see the slight risk. That's a level two out of five. And then here where you see the hash marks, that is actually uh, an enhanced risk and across Alabama and into West Georgia. And the SPC, the Storm Prediction Center, has put hash marks on it, just letting us know that this could be a particularly strong, severe weather outbreak with long track tornadoes and uh, severe thunderstorms capable of producing hurricane force winds as well. And on top of that, we do have a wind advisory, so we are expected to see numerous limbs down, potential for trees coming down, and a lot of power outages as these winds continue to blow. And that's in effect all day tomorrow from 7 a.m. until 10 o'clock at night. Looking out over Noonan, this could be, you know, the further south and west you are, I think the better your chances for seeing severe storms. And so it's a good time just to think about what you would do if there's a tornado warning in your neighborhood and it's heading in your direction. Uh, these are things you need to think about ahead of time, heading to a sturdy place in your home, in the center of your home, with the lowest level of your home. If you live in a mobile home, you may want to just go somewhere else for the afternoon and evening that's more secure. You want to grab your pets, of course, and your phone, and also leave a TV. If you're going to be sheltering in your home, leave your TV set turned up so you can hear coverage that is going on so you can stay ahead of the storm. So temperatures are going to be very warm ahead of this system. We're looking at temps right now already in the 60s. They're just going to be going up overnight, and by tomorrow we're going to be in the 70s. So it's going to be very warm as we head in through our Saturday. So just a few scattered showers tonight, but then that severe potential continues into tomorrow afternoon and evening and then flooding rain is possible next week so after we get through the severe episode we're gonna have to worry about flood potential so tonight just a few showers no big deal uh, heading out the door tomorrow though it'll be windy 
and rainy. So we'll have more widespread showers throughout our Saturday than we saw today. Of course, we haven't seen much at all, but those winds are going to be the main thing you notice as you step out. This line moves into West Georgia in the late afternoon, early evening hours from Dalton stretching down into Carrollton moves across Atlanta as we head in through the middle of the evening and then over to the east as we head into the later evening hours. So we are going to put a QR code up here on the bottom of your screen. If you don't have the 11 Alive app, it's a great way to stay informed if there are any warnings in your neighborhood. Just aim your camera on your phone in this direction and it'll read the code and it'll show you how to download the app and then just set up the notifications on how to receive weather warnings because we're going to see those storms move through through the overnight uh, late evening hours on Saturday and then by Sunday we get a little break in the action and then it comes right back at us once again. So next week we're going to be talking about the flooding potential as we head in to the uh, middle of next week. So rain will be widespread as we head in through the weekend and into next week we could be talking several inches in some spots once we get into uh, Wednesday, Thursday next week. So impressive storm totals expected, severe storms expected tomorrow afternoon and evening. We dry it out for a brief moment on Sunday. Rain comes back at us Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Samantha, thank you. New developments now in a story we first brought you last night on prime time in the 10 o'clock hour. The state labor department tells 11 Alive they are now investigating after a Metro Atlanta company suddenly shut down, leaving hundreds of people without jobs. On December 23rd, employees of Premier Surfaces received an email from the company saying they were having some financial troubles, but they were trying to keep the doors open. Then on January 3rd, another email saying the company was closing, shutting down effective immediately. The surprise move left nearly 1,000 employees across the country, including 140 of them here in Metro Atlanta, without any kind of work or any kind of back pay, severance, or health insurance. They say company executives have now vanished, disappeared, poof, gone with their personnel files. So they're having trouble filing for unemployment, as you might imagine. We have reached out to the company, and guess what? No luck, not hearing anything. When we called the State Labor Department today, they were unaware of the company closing up. So after looking into it further, they said it does not appear the company filed the required paperwork through their department before shutting down. According to state and federal law companies, they have to notify the Labor Department and file the proper paperwork 60 days before closing the doors. Now, they must also notify employees 60 days prior, but there are no legal ramifications. There are no penalties for not following these laws. However, if employees choose to take civil action, the employer could be forced to pay them back pay and provide health insurance for each day they were short of that 60-day requirement. The Labor Department tells us now that they are deploying their rapid response team to try and get in contact with the company of whom their leaders now are in exile or hiding in basements somewhere. They say that they will do everything they can to try to help employees go through the process filing for unemployment and finding new work. So far, they have not been able to reach anybody, any leaders with this company. So it is a developing story that we will continue to follow. I'm Francesca Emmerker with the A-Scene. Are you ready to boss up? Well, in Atlanta, Native stars alongside major actresses in a new movie that was filmed right here in Atlanta, and it comes out today. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points.
An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crown Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel this good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Friday's edition of the A-Scene, and we are kicking off with a huge congratulations to my uncle of the industry, Mr. Tyler Perry, who just came out with his first ever Netflix movie. In fact, he had a screening last night in downtown Atlanta, and the movie is called A Fall from Grace, and of course, we were there. But before watching the movie, Perry thanked the audience for their continued support and shared this powerful message. So my hope, my heart, my soul for each and every one of you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, is everything you've done for us, the dreams and the joy that we're experiencing, I don't care what you're going through in your life, I don't care what it is, my hope is that everything that you put out here comes back to you a million fold. Amen. A message, right? Now, that was Perry alongside film star Crystal Fox on that stage. The movie is about a woman who goes through a tumultuous divorce only to find a man who seems to be her knight in shining armor. Then things take a sinister turn. Now, I'll be catching up with Perry about the film next week, but be sure to mark your calendars because the film begins streaming on Netflix on January 17th. And finally, speaking of films filmed here in Atlanta, Like a Boss out today. The movie stars Tiffany Haddish, Rose Byrne, Salma Hayek, and Billy Porter. Haddish and Burns character are living their best lives, running their own cosmetics company as BFFs. Unfortunately, they're in over their heads financially, and the prospect of a big buyout offer from a notorious titan of the cosmetics industry, played by Salma Hayek, sweeps in. And guess what? Atlanta native Jacob Lattimore is also featured in the film Out Today. It's Atlanta's newest major league sport, rugby. ATL kicks off this weekend. We'll get you ready for it. Coming up. Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen 
you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So yeah, just do what I say. I'm no, no. Today, undefeated LSU made the 98-mile track from Baton Rouge to NOLA, New Orleans, Louisiana, ahead of Monday night's college football national championship game. The top-seeded Tigers come into the game against Clemson as prohibitive favorites. And being so close to campus, the stadium will be packed with fans sporting the familiar purple and gold. The university has canceled all classes Monday and Tuesday in Baton Rouge because of the game. Meanwhile, Trevor Lawrence and Clemson, the Tigers, have also touched down in New Orleans. Clemson, the underdog, they have heard that before. We'll see what happens. Coach Dabo is the man. This is a team that's won, what, 29 straight games or something like that. They are, they are a very, very special program along the shores of Lake Hartwell. Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting game to watch, mm. hopefully. We'll hopefully. See. Well, while you're between NFL playoff games or waiting on the big one on Monday, you can check out Atlanta's newest sports team on Sunday. Rugby ATL plays its first match, a preseason game against, wouldn't you know, New Orleans. It's happening at Life University in Marietta. Major League Rugby is a 12-team league with the regular season starting in February. The team has players from all over, including Atlanta, all the way to New Zealand. Having a pro team um, in this area, I think, is, is great for the game. You know, it's, it's growing the fan base, is getting people excited. You know, um, Atlanta's had rugby, but Atlanta hasn't had a rugby team, which I think is, is going to be a big game changer in terms of growth for the sport in the area. <laughs> Swelly's a rough one, yeah, right? No, That's just something new for me to check out in Atlanta. I still haven't been to Atlanta United game. Yeah, uh, rugby's going to have to kind of grow on me a little bit. Just, yeah. uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> see what happens. Maybe we can go. Yeah. I've, never, I've never been. There we go. All right, it's a date, Ron Jones. Okay, so here we go, folks. It's almost 9 o'clock, as you know. We have a lot coming up next on 11 Alive's Primetime News. She's lived in the same house for more than a decade. Now a new management company says she owes them $17,000. And new questions tonight about how much Hollywood is really helping Georgians. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. All right, we're going to begin tonight with breaking news. This is out of Smyrna. Police are investigating a traffic-related death. This was on South Cobb Drive in Mill Pond Road. This is a live look at the scene right now. This is right off of north of Emory Hospital in Smyrna. You can see there's a lot of police activity. They're going to be there for quite some time when they're investigating this death. We are working to find out the details of exactly what happened. Smyrna PD say that this area is going to be shut down for traffic for the next couple of hours so drivers should just try to find a totally different route. Download the 11 Alive News app for updates on this story. Hey, we're, we're uh, weather aware tonight, tracking possible severe thunderstorms and even tornadoes tomorrow. Yeah, the severe weather is expected late Saturday afternoon into the evening across North Georgia. Meteorologist Samantha Moore in with us tonight to tell us more about that timing, Sam. Uh, we're talking about the rain really starting to pick up tomorrow afternoon as storms start to approach and the winds as well. So right now is really the calm before the storm. We just have a smattering of showers on the east side uh, moving up through social 
partial circle in Athens towards Murrayville at this hour, but very light stuff. More moderate rain moving through Alabama, and this is the leading edge of an initial line that's going to be moving through overnight. So our rain will increase, but no storms yet. It's going to be this next line. This is where everything is still intensifying here tonight, stretching across uh, much of the Midwest, down across the Mississippi River Valley. And you can see where we have a few tornado warnings right now here uh, in the Ozarks of Arkansas. So uh, rough night for those folks as this moves to the east with that tornado threat continuing during the early morning hours. And this is all heading in our direction. They have an enhanced risk, risk which is a level four out of five affecting them in the Arklatex tonight. We will have a level two in the Atlanta metro area out of five, according to the SPC, at least at this point. It is possible they could raise our threat level tomorrow as the day wears on because the storm will be coming in during the warmest point of the day. And also to our west, we have an enhanced chance. It's a three out of five chance. And uh, our westernmost counties here need to really think about where they would seek safe shelter because the SPC giving them a chance for a possibility of long track tornadoes and hurricane force wind gusts out of some of these thunderstorms that may form. So coming up, we'll go hour by hour and let you know the critical times when we expect to see the stormiest weather here in North Georgia. All right, thanks, Sam. Make sure to receive the latest weather alerts and warnings by downloading the 11 Alive app. You can also check interactive radar and maps anytime there for updates on the forecast wherever you are, even if the power goes out. There is a death row inmate suing the Georgia's prison system asking to die by a firing squad instead of lethal injection. Our very own Elwin Lopez is digging through this lawsuit. This is quite unusual here, Elwin. Yeah, it is, Ron. So death by lethal injection is the preferred method, if you will, when it comes to executions in states where the death penalty exists. Michael Wade Nance says his veins are hard to get to and severely compromised, which would make a lethal injection risky and painful. Nance was sentenced to death 18 years ago in Gwinnett County for shooting and killing a man while trying to steal the victim's car after robbing a bank in Lilburn. In the lawsuit, Nance claims putting a catheter into a, quote, scarred vein is extremely difficult and presents a substantial risk that the vein will blow, which could cause the drug to leak and cause intense pain and burning in the surrounding tissue. That's why he says he is asking for a firing squad to carry out his execution, a method that is only allowed in three states, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Utah, although they all have lethal injection as the primary execution method. But the only state of these to use it is Utah. They have used a firing squad three times since 1976. Now, this might seem unusual, but this isn't the first time inmates have raised concerns about lethal injections and asked to be executed through an electric chair or a firing squad. Now, I asked Gwinnett County District Attorney Danny Porter about this, and he said if he wants a firing squad, then let him have it. Ron? Okay, thanks a lot, Elwin. I'm sure we're going to stay on top of that one. Topping our speed feed tonight, a man say that, uh, or man, police say, broke into a Cartersville tire store, got trapped there, and then he was forced to call 911 on himself. Listen to this. Hello, Barton County 911. Okay. okay, where are you, sir? I'm in the tire shop in Cartersville. Cartersville police say Seth King was forced forced his way into Salgado Tire Store Sunday afternoon when a rack of tires fell on top of him. A store employee says they placed tires up against the back door for extra security. Police showed up shortly after King called 911 and they locked him up. Henry County police are now saluting fallen K-9 officer Thor tonight. He died after he was seriously hurt in a crash on Interstate 75 last night. A tractor trailer collided with a police vehicle near mile marker 208. Two officers were treated for minor injuries. The truck driver was flown to Grady for evaluation. Thor had only been with the force for six months. A DeKalb County city is now backing away from plans to annex a nearly empty shopping mall. Clarkston is making plans to expand, and that had included annexing North DeKalb Mall. The once thriving shopping center is now nearly largely a poster child for the decline of American malls. But today, 11 Alive confirmed the city is putting that proposal on hold on the back burner for now based on feedback from residents. The issue was tabled at city council meetings on uh, Tuesday. A city hall meeting is scheduled for January 27th. All right, so you've seen the headlines claiming Georgia's film tax breaks have helped create tens of thousands of jobs here in Georgia. In fact, the state previously put that number at about 92,000 jobs. That's a lot. 
Now a new report indicates that figure is grossly inflated by about a thousand percent. So how did the numbers end up so off? What happened here? Doug Richards takes a look. The audit takes aim at what it describes as overinflated claims about the Georgia film tax credit, the money generated and the number of jobs created. And it focuses on both the economic benefits and the economic costs of the program. Instead of the nine and a half billion dollar economic impact claimed, the report says the real gross benefit was 4.6 billion, but the net benefit was only 2.8 billion once costs were included. Instead of producing 92,000 jobs, the audit says the film industry produced 29,000 jobs. But the audit says the credit also cost the state more than 19,000 jobs from reduced government spending, making the net benefit only 9,100 jobs. The audit also says the state tax credit cost the state nearly $66,000 per job. In a rebuttal, the state economic development department contends the cost per job is only 19000 It's costing a lot of money no matter what estimate you use, but the estimate that the Georgia Department of Economic Development is using on cost per job makes absolutely no sense. J.C. Bradbury produced a study a few weeks ago similarly critical of the Georgia film tax credit. In the new audit, the Department of Economic Development, which oversees the film tax credit, fiercely disputes the findings. The mere fact the film tax credit isn't fiscally positive to the state can't be used to determine the credit isn't beneficial, the department writes in a response included in the audit report. The new state audit also says 88 percent of the film tax credits went to non-Georgia companies and that most wages used for the credit went to non-residents. Yet the film program remains politically popular. A day ago, House Speaker David Ralston defended it. Would I favor abolishing it? And the answer is an unequivocal no, because what we have to understand is that at the other end of that tax credit is Georgians working. But not that many Georgians, says Bradbury. And it's largely just making life easier for uh, rich Hollywood producers and actors, not helping Georgians. All right, so if this story piqued your interest, you can check out the full film credit audit over on 11alive.com. In it, you'll see two state agencies, both under the auspices of Governor Kemp, globbering each other's numbers and methodology. Keep him, Kemp himself has kept mum on this entire topic. His office says he's studying the audits before he talks. The Democratic presidential hopeful Mike Bloomberg is now stopping in Atlanta today, and he's throwing his support behind Fair Fight Action's efforts to reform Georgia's law when it comes to purging voter rolls. While poll taxes and grandfather clauses may long, no longer be on the books, make no mistake, voter suppression remains a very big problem. And if it wasn't for Stacey Abrams, who would be your governor today, we would get that. Well, a federal judge recently denied an injunction filed by the Fair Fight Action that would have prevented the removal of more than 120,000 inactive voters from state rolls. But the group did score a smaller victory in December when the state agreed to restore 22,000 voters that had been removed from the polls. Fair Fight says it's now focusing on pressuring Georgia Republicans to amend a bill to clarify changes to how the purges are conducted. People in East Cobb County are anxious for a rundown shopping center to get a makeover. For years, people have complained about Sprayberry Crossing, saying it's an eyesore that negatively affects home values in their area. Atlantic Realty Partners has shown interest in developing the space, but their initial proposal included a lot of apartments, which was met with some opposition from those living nearby. I think the, the community is looking for something that they can use. They can uh, it's somewhere that you know is, is a center for, for the whole community to come in and use with retail and restaurants and maybe a grocery store. Um, but that we didn't see that on the first proposal. We just saw it mostly residential. The property, which is more than a dozen acres, includes an old cemetery that's posed a problem for redevelopment. For the full story, head to myeastcobnews.com. All right, straight ahead, a local woman fighting her homeowners association to the tune of $17,000. We're going to walk you through this mess. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation down in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news in prime time after the break. It's a good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate.
hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time act. woman is fighting her HOA after being hit with $17,000 worth of fines. Yeah, we're talking about Pat Kramer. She has lived in that home for about 13 years now. But she says when a new management company took over about a year and a half ago, she started getting these letters saying that things were wrong with her property. So she tells 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross there is no way she can possibly pay all that money. First, the HOA told her her trash cans couldn't be visible from the street. You have to turn your head so far over like this to see it for the second that you are passing my house. So she moved them inside. Which is very hard to get them in and out. Then the problem was her hose. It was, you know, all wrapped up, so it really didn't look bad. Then it was her lawn art. Can't have those. Then they wanted her to power wash her house and sweep up her driveway. She says she didn't fight them on it. They are the laws, laws that they've written, and I have the documents and all that. But when she didn't get it done fast enough, she got late fees on top of late fees, $25 a day for each infraction. She tried to plead for mercy. And they never return calls, never. I called them for a year, and no one would call me back. 11 Alive called and emailed all-in-one community management, too, but never heard back. She says the whole thing has been so frustrating. These are things that are so incidental, they're not important. They're asinine, and you're charging me $17,000. Pat says she has $7,000 to her name, and there's no way she can ever pay the fine. Well, it's just insane. It's, it's purely insane, and I, you know, there's nothing I can do. Well, it's not over just yet, because Pat was able to get a lawyer through uh, legal aid, but they basically told her it is the right of the HOA to fine her based upon the bylaws of the community, even if the bylaws don't make sense to her. But this isn't just a problem for Pat. There are hundreds of people in the state fighting their HOAs. The reveal profiled a metro woman whose own battle with her HOA ended in the loss of her home. Walked in, paid him the $2,700, and when I walked out, I said, this is all I owe, right? Yes. But it wasn't all you owed? No. Patricia quickly upset with their billing process, initially refused to pay her HOA dues. Even after she gave in and paid what she thought was the full balance in full, she kept getting bills until finally she was sent an eviction notice. It turned out the HOA had purchased her home through foreclosure for just $3.24. That's perfectly legal, but according to attorney George Nowak, who helped craft Georgia's HOA laws, it's also preventable. They brought this on because they ignored all of the requests to pay. They didn't show up at the trial most times. Now, a lot of homeowners out there argue that it is rarely in black and white when it comes to these rules, but that's why they want the state to create an adjudicator office to help resolve some of these disputes and keep these cases out of court. You can watch our full investigation on 11alive.com or check out the reveal section of the 11alive app.
Well, your 11 Alive storm trackers will be busy as we head in through our Saturday tracking severe storms. Not much to track tonight here locally, just a few showers off to our east. But we will see increased showers overnight as this line moves in out of Alabama. So we'll end up seeing it move across the state. So we'll see an increase in the showers tonight and into tomorrow morning. But the main event is still back here across eastern Texas and Oklahoma. And that's where they have been, uh, that line has been producing some severe weather tonight. So we still have a couple of tornado watches that are in effect through the early morning hours and we still have some active warnings in the Ozarks of Arkansas as this line moves eastward. So of course that's the best chance that location is the best chance to see severe storms tonight and enhance level four out of five back from East Texas into Western Mississippi. So their chance is greater than ours. But nonetheless, as this moves to the east, we could still see some very destructive weather tomorrow afternoon or evening. So we'd like for you to be prepared. We do have a slight chance that is a level two out of five across the Atlanta metro area from north to south, from northwest Georgia all the way into south Georgia. On the west side, we have a level three out of five in that enhanced chance and the Storm Prediction Center giving us hash lines, meaning that we could see some significant long track tornadoes, also some uh, hurricane force wind gusts with some of these uh, thunderstorms that do form, these severe thunderstorms that form. So a serious situation developing here and we'll have gusty winds overall all day long from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. We all expect to see gusts up to 35 miles per hour and that could bring some trees and some limbs down. Looking out over Rome, you can see the winds picking up there and as the front approaches during the day tomorrow we'll see those winds continue to increase so even if you don't see a severe thunderstorm in your area a tornado in your area we could see some destructive winds and I think most people will be impacted by the strong winds tomorrow afternoon and evening let's go ahead and take a look at what we're expecting to see as far as our timeline goes we're going to end up seeing that chance for showers on the increase tonight mild temperatures are going to be in the low 60s because we're seeing the winds shift out of the south and that southerly wind will bring in very warm air. So tomorrow we'll have those southerly winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour in the morning and showers becoming more widespread. During the afternoon we'll see those severe storms develop moving from west to east with gusty damaging winds and possible tornadoes anytime from around late afternoon in through the late evening hours. Then on Sunday the rain, rain ends early. We'll see the front stall to our south and then it comes back at us in the form of a big rain event Monday and into Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday, and we could still be talking about a rising flood risk as we head into next week. So 66 was our high today, 50 our low. We should be around 52 and 34 this time of year. So unseasonably warm even into the overnight. Look at these temps in the 60s all night long. So showers will increase overnight. We'll have that severe potential Saturday afternoon and evening with that rain possible as we head into next week. This is a QR code for our 11 Alive app. If you aim your camera at it right now, it'll help you download that app very easily then set your settings to give you weather uh, warning, warnings, including uh, severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, because we may be seeing that unfold tomorrow. We'll be watching the radar carefully here. You can see we'll have widespread showers during the day tomorrow, and then that line of storms approaches during the late afternoon and evening hours with those gusty damaging winds and that risk for tornadoes. And this is 9 o'clock in the evening, moving through Gainesville and Athens and Eatonton. So it's going to come in fast and then slow down, so it'll have plenty of time to uh, wreak damage across much of North Georgia. So we're going to continue to watch that threat for severe as we head through tomorrow, increasing during the afternoon and evening. Getting into Sunday, a 20% chance for showers. So we'll get a little lull in the action. Then that front comes back up and brings in a lot more moisture Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Right now are looking very wet with a potential for flooding. Well, today, a surprising apology directed at congressional Democrats from Georgia Republican Representative Doug Collins. After he said this, listen. They're in love with terrorists. We see that. They, they mourn Soleimani more than they mourn our Gold Star families. Today, Collins apparently walking back his remarks, tweeting, quote, I apologize for what I said. The series of five tweets goes on to say the comments were in reference to the House War Powers Resolution, and Collins remains committed to working with his colleagues in Congress to, quote, keep all Americans safe. The apology tweets came shortly after an email reportedly to Collins supporters from a political action committee was sent with the headline, I will not apologize. But not before NBC late night host Seth Meyers took some shots at Collins' original comments. Unlike Doug Collins, I'm going to say this very slowly so everyone can understand it. <laughs> off! 
Meanwhile, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi sent a letter to Democratic lawmakers today saying the articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump could be delivered to the Senate as early as next week. All right, coming up in prime time, a local brewery comes up with a unique way to help curb sex trafficking. We'll explain after the break. 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're a lot convenient. Of fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. Ah. You're all, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in a local brewery comes up with a unique way to curb human trafficking in Metro Atlanta. Now, it now has a major airline's attention leading to a new partnership. 11 Alive's Joe Hinkey explains the message behind the Freedom Fighter Brew. Inside Gate City Brewing for founders Brian Borngesser and Pat Rains, their Freedom Fighter IPA is more than a beer. On the front, we have the Freedom Fighter X, and then on the back, you can see we have uh, some facts about ending human trafficking. And there's also a national hotline number people can call or text for help or to report suspected trafficking. It's a difficult topic to talk about. Um, and so bringing awareness and just putting it out there in a way that people can talk about um, was a big key. The beer came to be out of talks with the Roswell Rotary about the Rotary's ongoing efforts to end modern day slavery. Gate City suggested making a beer to help. A short time later, Freedom Fighter joined the brewery's lineup and they began selling six packs, pints and shirts. Then Delta Airlines called. Well, we've had a couple pinch me moments since Gate City has been uh, been founded, and this was definitely one of them. Uh, like Pat said, this was something that we didn't anticipate becoming what it's become. Uh, we did it to raise awareness for a very important issue. Delta wanted to sell Freedom Fighter on flights as part of the airline's ongoing efforts to fight human trafficking, a huge undertaking for a fast-growing but small brewery. We stopped everything that we were <laughs> to make sure that we could take care of Delta. So there were some conversations that happened about what the volume, what their ask was going to be, what they were going to require from us, and we immediately stopped and looked at the production plan. Gate City's founders say they have always looked for ways to give back to their community, and now they are sending their beer some 30,000 feet up on Delta flights and taking their mission of giving back to new heights. Through Gate City Brewing Company to go and do something that, um, like this Delta partnership, like this beer, and get it out there and the potential to save a life. I mean, it really makes you stop and think. It's a business, um, but it really can be more. That was Joe Hinkie reporting, by the way. For now, the beer is on select Delta domestic flights during the month of January for National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. 
Now, with the sales supporting two uh, Atlanta area organizations, Wellspring Living and Out of Darkness, organizers hope their partnership can at least become a yearly effort to raise awareness. It takes courage to report a sexual assault, and there are certain guidelines that should be followed when a report is made, especially at a school. But coming up, a reveal investigation looks at a case that has been open for more than three years. Yeah, only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can no, 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 there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I You're consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block. We have new information on that breaking news we told you about at the top of the hour. Smyrna police say a pedestrian was hit by a car and killed on South Cobb Drive in Mill Pond Road. That's just north of Emory Hospital, Smyrna. The idea of the victim is not known, but we know it is an adult. Police say the victim was not in the crosswalk when they were crossing the road. The driver did stop and stayed on scene. Smyrna police say this area will be closed to traffic for the investigation, so drivers should find a different route. Download the 11 Alive News app for updates on this story. Welcome to The Reveal on Prime Time. I'm investigative reporter Rebecca Lindstrom. It takes courage to report a sexual assault, especially when attacked by someone you see every day at school. Title IX sets clear guidelines for what should happen when a report is made, and there is supposed to be a federal complaint process when those rules aren't followed. But the case you're about to hear has been open for more than three years. Rape is tough to talk about. Well, at first I kind of tried to pretend it didn't happen. But when this girl was only 13, she says it did happen. A rapist, a classmate at school. It made me feel, I mean, I would say worthless and kind of like, I don't know, disposable. One night I was, I tried to commit suicide. 
Then she began to tell me things like, I hate, I hate myself. I hate myself. And I'd say, what? What do you hate? I hate everything about myself. Everything. Charlie. Victoria is now 17. To protect her privacy, we've changed her name and we're not showing the faces of her family. Well, the attack happened at a friend's house. Victoria had four classes with the boy at Jefferson Middle School. And she says she was being harassed by him and other students in the hallways. Poor slut. Just yelled at her all the time. Did the school launch its own investigation after it heard about the allegation of rape? No, never. Did the school offer your daughter counseling or mental health services? No. Did they separate your daughter from the boy she says raped her? No. When did the bullying stop? Never. Yet the school was legally responsible to do all of those things. Absolutely. A school is always responsible for providing an educational environment free of sexual hostility. Lisa Anderson provides legal counsel to women sexually assaulted to help them understand their rights under Title IX. While most people associate the term with sports or college, the rules apply to any classroom that receives federal funding. It's one reason Victoria's family filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Education. According to the complaint, two other girls say the same boy physically assaulted them. It was here on campus that one girl says he choked her until she almost passed out and made unwanted sexual advances. But she says she didn't tell the school about it because it had failed to do anything about him in the past. Catching the kids young, I mean, I think that's... That's when you can actually change them and teach them. According to Georgia's Department of Education, more than 7,000 students were disciplined last school year for sexual misconduct, harassment, or battery. A third of those, students in middle school. But the number of students disciplined varied widely by district. While most in Metro Atlanta reported less than 300 offenses, Gwinnett County reported more than 1,200 students disciplined for some kind of sexual misconduct. So would you almost be more concerned about the district with the higher numbers or the lower numbers? Lower numbers, definitely. <laughs> that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. That means that you are sweeping everything under the rug. In high school, Victoria says administration promised to keep them apart. But when the second semester started, she walked into one of her classes and found him sitting there. So many promises had been broken, but like this was a big one. She said, every time I walk in that door, they take a piece of me and I, I don't have anything else to give. Victoria now attends a private school. We lost everything. You know, people don't stand beside you when you go through things that are ugly. And this was ugly. It's really inspiring. The necklaces around Victoria's neck remind her just how beautiful she is. So, and so she goes on. It feels really good to have people express that they think that about me, like that I'm brave or that I'm strong enough to go on. The boy involved in this incident was never charged and denies doing anything wrong. Now, because this case has languished so long, both are now in college. The Department of Education has been trying for two years now to rewrite the rules around these types of investigations. And until that process is over, investigations remain on hold. Eight metro school systems have an open investigation, some of these cases as old as 2015. You can see more in-depth investigations like this one by going to our website at 11alive.com. And don't forget to watch The Reveal, the only local investigative show in the country, Sundays at 6 on our sister station, 11 Alive. A few showers moving in there tonight, but we're really expecting things to change as we head through our Saturday. I'm meteorologist Samantha Moore, one of your 11 Alive storm trackers, and we're seeing the wind shift out of the south now. That's going to allow things to moisten up overnight, and then this line moves through during the early morning hours in the first part of Saturday. That'll intensify our rain a bit. It'll be more widespread shower activity, but the main line is still all the way back in east Texas. There's some nasty storms here that are over western Arkansas right now in the Ozarks with a few tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado watches still in place east of Dallas and stretching over towards Arkansas. So this whole system is going to be heading in our direction overnight tonight and in through our Saturday. So the highest chance for severe storms back here from east Texas into Mississippi tonight. That's a level four out of five chance of seeing some uh, severe storms tonight that could produce tornadoes. Now tomorrow our chances are slightly less than that, but they're still 
pretty high here across the Atlanta metro area. We have a level two out of five. And then once you get closer to the Alabama line and Bear in mind, this could be shifted in either direction tomorrow as the SPC uh, ends up Storm Prediction Center fine tunes the forecast. But right now they have an enhanced risk to see long track tornadoes that stay on the ground longer and have the ability to do more damage, as well as those damaging winds that we're expecting to see as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening. So coming up, we'll go hour by hour, let you know when to expect those storms to move in and when they'll move on out. All right, Sam, see you in a couple of minutes and the weather is impacting some sporting events UGA's basketball game in, at Auburn is now moving up to noon tomorrow the original game time was 6 p.m. and make sure you receive the latest weather alerts and warnings by downloading the 11 Alive app you can also check interactive radar and maps anytime you want to for updates on the forecasts wherever you are even if your power goes out Topping tonight's speed feed, a police chase leads to a massive crash on the connector during afternoon rush hour. Georgia State Patrol says a trooper tried to pull over an SUV for traveling more than 100 miles per hour on I-75. That happened near Mount Perrin Road, but the driver kept on going. Then later crashed into five vehicles near Northside Drive. GSP says the driver got out and took off running. All southbound lanes were shut down for nearly an hour. Luckily, only two minor injuries were reported in the crash. The suspect has not been found. Six people end up in the hospital after police say a team took off in a stolen car. Police say officers spotted the stolen car this morning near Wellborn in Marbut, but the 19-year-old behind the wheel took off. Moments later, police say he crashed into another car on Giles Road, hurting two innocent people. They were taken to the hospital along with the four suspects in the stolen car. Police say the car was stolen earlier during a home invasion in Rockdale. While trying to make a great escape, Alpharetta police shared this photo of a man accused of breaking into an apartment and then trying to make a quick exit off the balcony. Hope he was on the second floor, perhaps. We're told he and another man were using crowbars to open doors at the Avalon yesterday. One of the men is in custody. The other is still on the run tonight. You know, Aisha, we're getting a first look at the moment. A Polk County officer was hit by a train. The department releasing this body cam footage. Now take a look at this. We stopped it right before impact. The train slammed into officer Andy Anderson, knocking him off the tracks. He's now out of surgery, recovering from broken ribs, an elbow and shoulder blade. The incident happened Tuesday while he was trying to arrest a man in Rock Mart. He heard the train. He just didn't realize how close to the tracks he was. Uh, we, we call that tunnel vision in law enforcement. You get so focused on the task at hand, you forget about your surroundings. And at this point, the police department, they're still looking for that suspect. Gwinnett County has approved a nearly $2 billion budget for 2020. The funding is heavily focused on public safety, transportation, and more funds to accommodate bilingual voters going into the election year. It also sets aside a million dollars to address homelessness. Gwinnett County has a large budget. It's $1.84 billion for one year. That's huge. That's the size of a small country. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of moving pieces here in a county that's so diverse and growing as Gwinnett County. But what I would want citizens to know is that we take providing services to them very seriously, and we want to make sure that we provide superior services to them, and it does take resources. To see a full breakdown of the budget for Gwinnett County, head to the My Lawrenceville News section on 11alive.com. A company sends an email during the holiday break telling workers not to come back. Now nearly a thousand people are out of a job. I'm Francesca Amaker with the A Scene. Are you ready to boss up? Well, in Atlanta, Native Stars alongside major actresses in a new movie that was filmed right here in Atlanta, and it comes out today. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We've been telling you this week about our severe weather threat for Saturday. These storms with the threat for damaging winds and possible tornadoes are most likely in the afternoon and evening hours on Saturday. This is at the same time as our broadcast of the NFL playoff game between the 49ers and the Vikings. So here's our plan. If tornado warnings are issued, we will need to break into the game to deliver life-saving information for those people in the path of the storm. 
but we plan to do a split screen that will show our weather coverage on one side of the screen and the football game on the other side of the screen in order to alert you of the storms. We will also utilize WATL, also 11alive.com, the 11alive app, and our YouTube channel for additional severe weather coverage. We will be very mindful of your desire to see the game while also passing along severe weather information at the same time. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers are committed to keeping your family safe. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. What's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. New developments in the story we first brought you last night on Primetime News. That's right, the State Labor Department tells 11 Alive they are investigating after a Metro Atlanta company suddenly shut down leaving hundreds of people without jobs. On December 23rd, the employees of Premier Services got an email from the company saying they were having some financial troubles, but were trying to keep the doors open. Then on January 3rd, they got another email saying the company was shutting down effectively immediately. The surprise move left nearly 1,000 employees across the country, including 140 of them right here in Metro Atlanta without jobs or any kind of back pay, severance pay, or health insurance. And they say the company executives have now varnished, or vanished rather, with their personal files, so they have no way of filing for unemployment. We have also reached out the, to the company, but no one, we haven't heard anything back just yet. Now, when we called the uh, State Labor Department today, they were unaware that the company was actually closing up. After looking into it a little bit further, they said it doesn't appear the company filed the required paperwork through their department before shutting down. So according to state and federal law, 
companies are required to notify the Labor Department and file the proper paperwork 60 days before closing. They must also notify employees 60 days prior, but there are no legal penalties for not following these laws. However, if employees choose to take civil action, the employer could be forced to pay them back pay and provide health insurance for each day they were short of that 60-day requirement. The Labor Department tells us that they are now deploying their rapid response team to try to get in contact with the company. Yeah, they're trying to help them out, so they said that they will do everything they can to try to help the employees go through the process of filing for unemployment and find new work. And so far, they have not been able to reach anyone with the company. So this is a developing story, and of course, we're going to continue to follow this. I believe I just heard a shot fire coming in my residence. I just came up the stairs two around. Stay outside. I'll be there in about two. Stay outside. Those dramatic moments can be seen in Trigger, an 11 Alive investigation that's been watched hundreds of thousands of times on our 11 Alive YouTube page. Jessica Boynton was married to her high school sweetheart, a Griffin police officer, for just six months before she was found locked in a closet, a gunshot wound to the head. The bullets were fired from her husband's service weapon, but who pulled the trigger? Over three years, Chief Reveal investigator Brendan Keith dug into what really happened, and now he's taking us through all the twists and turns of this strange case in a new podcast. The Officer's Wife launches Monday. You can subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts, and after you listen, please rate it and post a review. Well, we're watching just a few showers out there tonight, but we'll see the rain pick up as we head into the overnight hours as we'll have that first initial line coming out of Alabama. But the main line is still back in eastern Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, where it has brought a lot of severe thunderstorms tonight and some tornadoes. And look at this tornado environment. It continues to become more and more enhanced as we head into the evening hours. That's why we still have some tornado watches in place as the system advances in our direction. And that's where the risk, of course, is worse tonight for severe storms, a level four out of five, really from East Texas over to the Mississippi River Valley. And this all moves our direction tomorrow. So during the afternoon, our conditions will go downhill. We do have a tornado risk as well as a damaging wind gust risk. And those winds could be as strong as category one hurricane. And so they could really bring uh, some trees down and do a lot of damage. So you may want to secure anything on your balconies or around your home as uh, they could become projectiles if the winds get strong enough. And we're expecting gusts up to 35 miles per hour and those are just straight line winds Tor uh, tornadoes of course would be much stronger winds even severe thunderstorms could produce those winds over 70 miles per hour looking out over Athens tonight you can see it it's a pretty quiet night I saw folks just milling around there a little earlier but it is not going to be so nice as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening just look at this water vapor satellite imagery you can see how these storms have just been exploding over uh, the southern plains tonight and that is what is going to be over us as we head into tomorrow. So temperatures overnight will be very mild during the overnight hours as we have that southerly flow ahead of the front. That's taking our temperatures up, up, up. So by tomorrow, we'll be in the 70s during the day. So showers will continue to increase overnight. We'll have a severe potential on our Saturday afternoon and evening. And then once that's over with, that front actually pulls up stationary and then comes back at us and directs all kinds of moisture in here like a fire hose. So we'll have flooding rain possible Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So timing of our showers tonight, they're still going to be pretty light overnight. I think what you'll notice the most as you head out the door tomorrow early is not just the showers around, but those gusty winds that are going to be picking up throughout the day. So we could have winds up around 30 miles per hour even in the morning, and they'll continue to increase as we head through the afternoon, becoming more persistent and stronger as this frontal system approaches, this line of thunderstorms. So this is 5 o'clock, according to our future radar. It could speed up a little bit more. It could slow down a little bit. So we can't take this exactly uh, verbatim here, but we'll want to use it as a guide, knowing that early evening through middle of the evening, this is 7.30, we could have some destructive storms just kind of bisecting the state, those moving very slowly to the east. They'll slow down. They move in quickly, but they'll slow down in eastern Georgia, giving them more time to inflict damage from Clayton down into Athens, Covington, maybe 9.30, 10, 11 o'clock, and then that'll continue off to the east 
So by Sunday morning, we'll get a little break, but then that front's going to come right back at us and bring in more rain Sunday night, and that's just going to set up our pattern for next week. So not as much rain with this first event, although we could still have some areas of flooding because we could have some downpours that could bring in a lot of rain in a short period of time. But the real rain is going to come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and next week. But we could be talking so much as um, four inches in some spots, maybe even some more in some areas. And that's why we're concerned about flooding. Once we get past the severe this weekend, we'll have to be focused on flooding next week because flooding kills more people annually than any other severe weather entity. So just something to keep in mind. It's always wise to turn around if you come across a flooded street. So severe storms as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening, a really good chance. Everyone will experience those gusty, destructive winds during the day, especially the afternoon and evening. On Sunday, we get a quick break as it moves to our south, but then it comes right back at us again, importing a lot of moisture Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So flooding is going to be a real concern as we head into next week. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Friday's edition of the A Scene, and we are kicking off with a huge congratulations to my uncle of the industry, Mr. Tyler Perry, who just came out with his first ever Netflix movie. In fact, he had a screening last night in downtown Atlanta, and the movie is called A Fall from Grace, and of course, we were there. But before watching the movie, Perry thanked the audience for their continued support and shared this powerful message. So my hope, my heart, my soul for each and every one of you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, is everything you've done for us, the dreams and the joy that we're experiencing, I don't care what you're going through in your life. I don't care what it is. My hope is that everything that you put out here comes back to you a million fold. Amen. A message, right? Now, that was Perry alongside film star Crystal Fox on that stage. The movie is about a woman who goes through a tumultuous divorce only to find a man who seems to be her knight in shining armor. Then things take a sinister turn. Now, I'll be catching up with Perry about the film next week, but be sure to mark your calendars because the film begins streaming on Netflix on January 17th. And finally, speaking of films filmed here in Atlanta, Like a Boss out today. The movie stars Tiffany Haddish, Rose Byrne, Salma Hayek, and Billy Porter. Haddish and Burns character are living their best lives, running their own cosmetics company as BFFs. Unfortunately, they're in over their heads financially, and the prospect of a big buyout offer from a notorious titan of the cosmetics industry, played by Salma Hayek, sweeps in. And guess what? Atlanta native Jacob Lattimore is also featured in the film out today. All right, thanks a lot, Fran. The Academy Awards are coming up next month, and once again, the show will go without a host. The president of ABC Entertainment said the Oscars is going hostless for the second time, instead, the show will focus on musical performances, big comedy guests, and star power, a formula that she says worked for the Oscars last year. Kevin Hart backed out of uh, hosting last year's awards after the uh, homophobic tweets resurfaced about from him, and instead of finding a brand new host, the Oscars went without one. Nominations will be announced on Monday. We'll be right back. Rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all help shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. 
It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume it. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town. Okay, well, your 11 Alive storm trackers will be tracking that possibility of severe storms tomorrow afternoon and evening. So kind of had your plan in place of where you'd take cover if you need to, because we could have some tornadoes. Mm -hmm. That moves to our south on Sunday. Sunday looks pretty good. We get a break in the action, and then that front comes right back at us and funnels a lot of rain in here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we're going to go from a severe event over the weekend to a possible flood event next week. Uh, by the middle of next week, that rain is really going to accumulate. So we'll be watching that carefully. So it's a big super soaker for the next five days. It could be a super soaker for sure. Yep. We're definitely ending up on the positive side or starting out on the positive side this year. All, All right. right. Thanks, Sam. Well, hey, me and Ron, we'll see you on 11 Alive on Up Late at 11 p.m. Growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish. Oh, trust oh. me. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere <laughs> along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Lil Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristine, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, 
night, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your... 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. A strong system could bring severe storms to Metro Atlanta tomorrow. Samantha Moore in the Storm Center. She is tracking all of it for us. Sam, tell us more about the timeline on the severe weather. Oh, we're talking about it moving in during the afternoon and evening tomorrow. So right now it's over eastern Texas into eastern Oklahoma. Still some severe thunderstorm warnings out in advance of that and a tornado watch into the early morning hours here across much of Arkansas and Louisiana. So that's what's heading in our direction tomorrow afternoon and evening. So just a few showers out there tonight. They'll become a little more widespread as this line that's in Alabama moves in our direction overnight and into early tomorrow. And then it's in the afternoon and evening that we'll have an increased chance of severe storms. We'll have damaging wind gusts likely, as well as that threat for tornadoes. We have a level one out of five in far east Georgia, level two out of five, really bisecting from north to south, including the Atlanta metro area. And then along the Alabama line here, our counties from Carroll County southward, we have an even better chance, a three out of five chance of seeing severe storms. So here's your timeline. The showers increase tonight. Temperatures very mild in the low 60s as we get the air out of the south. It's rich in moisture. Widespread shower Saturday morning with gusty southerly winds increasing to 30 miles per hour. By tomorrow, late afternoon, early evening, severe storms will be developing, moving from west to east very quickly into the state with gusty damaging winds and possible tornadoes. And then once we get into Sunday, the rain will end, but that front is going to stall and that will have more impacts next week. And we'll talk about all that coming up. We have new information on the breaking news we told you about at the top of the 9 o'clock hour. Smyrna police say a pedestrian was hit by a car and killed on South Cobb Drive and Mill Pond Road. That's just north of Emory Hospital, Smyrna. The ID of the adult victim is not known at this hour. Police say the victim was not in the crosswalk when they were crossing the road. The driver did stop and stayed on scene. Smyrna police say this area is going to be closed to traffic for this investigation, so drivers may want to take a different route. Download the 11 Alive News app to continuously get updates on this developing story. It's becoming a familiar cocktail of crime. Thieves, gas stations, and victims going about their normal routines. Someone goes to fill up their car, only to have a thief drive off or steal items from the unlocked doors when their back is turned. It happened recently to a Union City woman at 9 in the morning. Hmm. Hope Ford talked to the victim exclusively and found out there's over a dozen victims at one particular gas station. I was mad, I was frustrated, everything all at one time. A purse stolen at 9 in the morning from this racetrack on Jonesboro Road in Union City. The victim didn't want us to show her face or use her name because the thieves got her driver's license. I was almost afraid to leave my house because I didn't know if they was going to try to come to my home. The victim normally puts her purse in the back seat and locks her car. Some reason why I didn't do that, I don't know. So as I was pumping, and I saw this guy that was walking by, and he just kept staring at me. She finished pumping gas, got back in her car, and tried to put her debit card in her wallet. They got me. Someone stole my purse. Before she could cancel all her cards, she received emails from Uber. The suspects called for two rides on her account. It's, it's a violation, you know? It's like... What can be done? The victim says police told her these crimes happen a lot. We checked with Union City Police and found 19 similar thefts happened at this racetrack in two months. What? 
I, I would not be going back to that gas station. Slider crimes seem to happen quite often across Metro Atlanta, from a Douglasville woman losing her purse in the same way to a car stolen at a Union City Shell station with a baby inside to a prize-winning show dog nabbed in Conyers. This victim hopes the suspects are caught. Gas stations step up to protect customers, and everyone remembers to lock their car. And she's grateful all they got away with was her purse. But I could have lost my life. The Union City Police report shows the suspect's car is a Kia Optima. However, the victim said police later told her that car was stolen. Well, Georgia will in all probability play a crucial role for many Democratic presidential candidates, particularly the former New York City mayor, Mike Bloomberg, who is skipping the early states of Iowa and New Hampshire is campaigning in states the other candidates have not touched yet. Ryan Kruger takes a look at the role Georgia could play. Mike Bloomberg's never been afraid of tough fights. There's a good chance you've seen a lot of Mike Bloomberg on your TV lately. This ad from the former New York mayor aired more than 20,000 times in Georgia just last month. Unlike everyone else in this race, I already have a record of beating Donald Trump time after time. Bloomberg campaigned in Atlanta on Friday. He and billionaire Tom Steyer are the only two Democratic candidates on the air in Georgia so far. Each of them has spent more than a million dollars on TV ads. Since Bloomberg got into the race so late, he's skipping the early states like Iowa, New Hampshire, and is instead focusing on Super Tuesday. It will feature several southern states having their primaries at the beginning of March, and Georgia primary comes three weeks later. I understand that some people think Georgia is a red state, but not me. I believe Georgia is a swing state, and together we can and will turn it blue. Meanwhile, another high-profile Georgia politician is on the campaign trail as well. Hi, I'm Keisha Lance Bottoms, mayor of Atlanta. Mayor Bottoms spent Friday making several stops all across Iowa for Joe Biden. I believe in Joe Biden, and I know that he is the only one who can actually win this election. And over on the Republican side, the president's daughter, Ivanka Trump, will be here campaigning for her father next week. She will be speaking about human trafficking and how the administration has been trying to combat it. All right, thank you, Ryan. Six people end up in the hospital after police say a team took off in a stolen car. Police say officers spotted the stolen car this morning near Wellburn and Marbut, but the 19-year-old behind the wheel took off. Moments later, police say he crashed into another car on Giles Road, hurting two innocent people. They were taken to the hospital along with the four suspects in the stolen car. Police say the car was stolen earlier during a home invasion in Rockdale. This into our newsroom here in the last few minutes. Two people have been arrested, accused of robbing a man, then shooting him, leaving him to die in the woods. Cobb County police say 23-year-old Terrence Marshall and 19-year-old Dontavian Jones are connected to the DeWenzel Spencer death. The victim's body was found in the woods on Queens Mill Road in 2016. Investigators believe he was walking to the Five Points Martyr Station about 4 a.m. He was then picked up by two people in a van. They allegedly took him to an ATM and robbed him. Cop police say this case still is under investigation. A local brewery has come up with a pretty unique way to curb human trafficking in Metro Atlanta. It ended up getting a major airline's attention, leading to a new partnership to combat the problem. Joe Henke is here to tell us more about the message behind Freedom Fighter Brew. Inside Gate City Brewing for founders Brian Borngesser and Pat Rains, their Freedom Fighter IPA is more than a beer. On the front, we have the Freedom Fighter X, and then on the back, you can see we have uh, some facts about ending human trafficking. And there's also a national hotline number people can call or text for help or to report suspected trafficking. It's a difficult topic to talk about. Um, and so bringing awareness and just putting it out there in a way that people can talk about um, was a big key. The beer came to be out of talks with the Roswell Rotary about the Rotary's ongoing efforts to end modern day slavery. Gate City suggested making a beer to help. A short time later, Freedom Fighter joined the brewery's lineup and they began selling six packs, pints and shirts. Then Delta Airlines called. Well, we've had a couple pinch me moments since Gate City has been, uh, been founded and this was definitely one of them. Uh, like Pat said, this was something that we didn't anticipate becoming what it's become. Uh, we did it to raise awareness for a very important issue. Delta wanted to sell Freedom Fighter on flights as part of the airline's ongoing efforts to fight human trafficking. 
a huge undertaking for a fast growing but small brewery. We stopped everything that we were <laughs> to make sure that we could take care of Delta. So there were some conversations that happened about what the volume, what their ask was going to be, what they were going to require from us, and we immediately stopped and looked at the production plan. Gate City's founders say they have always looked for ways to give back to their community, and now they are sending their beer some 30,000 feet up on Delta flights and taking their mission of giving back to new heights. Through Gate City Brewing Company to go and do something that um, like this Delta partnership, like this beer, and get it out there and the potential to save a life. I mean, it really makes you stop and think. It's a business, um, but it really can be more. The NFL is trying to address human trafficking as we get closer to next month's Super Bowl in Miami. The league is posting notices on planes, trains and billboards to make sure people know about the increase in human trafficking that comes with the game. Anyone flying American Airlines in or out of South Florida will see this message on their flight. We stand with its penalty against the exploitation and trafficking of vulnerable people. These crimes are illegal. <laughs> We reported on several sex trafficking stings in Atlanta in the weeks leading up to the Super Bowl and after Super Bowl 53 here. Last year, we saw efforts to fight human trafficking from Delta Airlines. They released an in-flight video ahead of the game on how to spot signs. Now as Miami deals with a similar issue, the city has actually created a specialized hotline for tips about suspicious activity around the Super Bowl. It's called 305 Fix Stop. There is, of course, a national human trafficking hotline. That number is at the bottom of your screen right now. The flu and vaping illnesses have very similar symptoms, and that is creating problems with diagnoses. We are connecting the dots. Coming up. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We've been telling you this week about our severe weather threat for Saturday. These storms with the threat for damaging winds and possible tornadoes are most likely in the afternoon and evening hours on Saturday. This is at the same time as our broadcast of the NFL playoff game between the 49ers and the Vikings. So here's our plan. If tornado warnings are issued, we will need to break into the game to deliver life-saving information for those people in the path of the storm. But we plan to do a split screen that will show our weather coverage on one side of the screen and the football game on the other side of the screen in order to alert you of the storms. We will also utilize our sister station, WATL, also 11alive.com, the 11 Alive app, and our YouTube channel for additional severe weather coverage. We will be very mindful of your desire to see the game while also passing along severe weather information at the same time. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers are committed to keeping your family safe. Bionic Arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South, and it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home, from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot, full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say you won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body the number of people being treated for the flu in georgia well above average down significantly though from the end of 2019 according to new data released by the department of health today five people have died nearly 150 hospitalized 
in the first week of the new year. That makes 22 deaths since September. Overall, more than 8,000 cases of the flu were reported over the past week. About half of those cases are people under the age of 25. So as the flu spreads, doctors have this issue. They have a dilemma. They have something that they really have to look at closely, and that is figuring out what exactly is the flu and what is a vaping illness because they, they look very similar. Why are the, the two so easy to confuse? 11 Alive's Jennifer Bellamy connecting the dots for us. According to the experts, the flu and other respiratory viruses look remarkably similar to vaping illness. That includes shortness of breath, night sweats, low oxygen levels, and spots on the lungs picked up by x-ray. Adding to the confusion, people who vape heavily are much more likely to get the flu. So if you show up at the doctor's office with these symptoms and test positive for the flu, they may give you some Tamiflu and send you home. But if you have the vaping illness, you need much more aggressive treatment and hospitalization. Right now, the CDC is telling doctors that if they have a patient who vapes and has flu symptoms, to treat them for both. Well, you're 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Oh, there you are. Sorry hey, about that. Hey, I talked Sam. right over you. <laughs> well, we know that you are very, very busy. So we, uh, we basically pop up before you do the weather information <laughs> to tip our cap to you and say thanks Aww. for all the good info. Take Bye. it away, Sam. Well, thank you for covering my mistake there. Yeah, multitasking, so many different computers and so many things at once. Balancing a lot of plates, and we'll be balancing a lot more as we head into tomorrow. And we'll have our whole team doing it together. So we will be covering it wall to wall if we need to. You can see a few showers out there tonight, but there is some more moderate rain to our west over Alabama. That will be moving in in the early morning hours. But really, the main event still here over the Plains states, over Oklahoma, in through Texas, and also into Arkansas. The Ozarks getting hit hard tonight, as well as St. Louis. But this whole system is going to be moving to the east, bringing its tornado threat and severe thunderstorm threat along with it during the afternoon and evening tomorrow. I was just looking at this tornado environment so it is instability and shear it uses those parameters to kind of dictate where the tornadoes could be and you can see how it did kind of peak within the last hour or so it's probably losing some of the energy from daytime heating so usually at night we get a little bit of weakening and then they can strengthen again but we're looking at that bullseye still over the arklatex stretching over to mississippi that moves to our east tomorrow so uh, moves to the east of there tomorrow so it moves in tomorrow for us slight risk to level two out of five for the atlanta metro area and then uh, a three out of five risk here in alabama and in west georgia really from uh, troop county into herd county carroll county harrelson county will have that better threat for long track tornadoes that could stay on the ground for a long time and do a lot of damage as well as gusty winds could be as strong as hurricane force in some of the thunderstorms and sustained winds could have gusts up to 35 miles per hour so we are expecting trees and tree limbs to come down and power outages unfortunately over Rome, we look right now, you can see the, the flags are flying, but they're going to be whipping a lot stronger uh, tomorrow, even during the morning and throughout the day. Those winds are going to continue to increase as that front approaches. So batten down the hatches around your house and secure any loose objects that could become projectiles, <laughs> because they could as we head into the uh, late afternoon hours. Temperatures are warm ahead of the system as we see those southerly winds continue to bring in warmer air. So we're right around 60 degrees. We're 62 in Rome, 64 in Dalton, and temperatures will be in the low to mid 60s much of the night with those rain chances going up as we head into tomorrow morning. So showers increase overnight into tomorrow. Severe threat will be tomorrow afternoon and evening, and then flooding rain will be possible next week. By the way, we're going to put a little QR code up here. You know that's how you can get to places on the uh, World Wide Web, and this will direct you to the 11 Alive app. Just aim your camera at it, and it will show you how to download the app quickly, and then you can, just a couple of steps to set up your notification so you can get warnings if there is uh, anything severe in your neighborhood. So we'll be doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage. It'll be on the app as needed as we head through the afternoon and evening. So showers moving in as we head into the overnight and through tomorrow. That line of storms on approach as we head into the evening hours. So late afternoon, early evening is when we expect that line to move to the east. This is mid-evening, maybe around 8 o'clock from Blairsville down into LaGrange and then moving to the east from Clayton into Athens 
Hastings and Thomaston later in the evening. So it's going to come in fast and then it's going to slow down and pull up stationary over South Georgia and then come back at us with flooding rain potential as we head into next week. So we're going to go from a severe weather event over the weekend to a possible flood event next week. So tomorrow we start out showery and windy and then the severe storms move in late in the afternoon and evening uh, getting into Sunday a 20% chance of rain after it clears through it'll look pretty good first half of the day and then the rain comes back at us and sticks with us Monday Tuesday and into Wednesday and we could be talking about a pretty big flood event next week. All right, thanks, Sam. Well, check this out. After buying a brand new ring security camera, one woman in Texas left feeling anything but protected. The device was already registered to someone else and contacting ring didn't bring any peace. Jay Wallace with our sister station in Dallas has more on this unsettling situation. Sandra Robinson is someone who wants to feel safe inside her DeSoto home, even when she's not there. You could see who was at your door. Robinson is talking about her video doorbell from Ring. She also has a camera in her living room. Both work just fine. You have to have a wireless connection in order to get the camera to work, in order to see it on your phone. But when she tries setting up her new floodlight camera, she gets this message. The device is still registered to its owner. Who's that owner? I don't know. Should be me. Robinson says she bought the camera brand new, and she has the receipt to prove it. She didn't find out it was registered to someone else until she contacted Ring Support. That's dangerous. I mean, it's it's evasive, invasive. You know, you don't know what's going on. I mean, it's disturbing. Her concern grew even more after seeing recent reports of hacked Ring cameras. Like Tanya Amador, whose login information was stolen in a data breach. She shared this video with us in December. Your account has been terminated by a hacker. Really catches you off guard. Alex Nettles says a new device being linked to an account right out of the box is unusual. That is uncommon, definitely. This is a major issue for this lady. Nettles sells security equipment in Dallas and says with the right access and Wi-Fi connection, Robinson's issue could get even worse. She probably does have someone looking through her camera, possibly at this moment. Robinson emailed Ring for more than a month trying to figure out if someone could have access to her new camera. A Ring representative told us it wouldn't be possible because of a two-step authentication process. Ring says this mix-up sometimes happens when someone buys a used device. But again, Robinson bought her device new directly from Ring.com. Chime Pro is looking for your Ring device. So at this point, she just wants her device to work. I'm also paying for you know, uh, being able to view the camera. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. why not give me a camera that I'm able to install successfully and able to view on my network? And hopes for a resolution or a refund. Separate from that woman's concerns, Ring has fired four of its workers for snooping on customers' video feeds. The company says those employees should never have access to them, and now only three people in the entire company have access to the feeds. They're also changing the settings on all new cameras to help prevent hacking. I'm Francesca Amaker with the A-Scene. Are you ready to boss up? Well, in Atlanta, Native stars alongside major actresses in a new movie that was filmed right here in Atlanta, and it comes out today. John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it?
think everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. Yeah. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now. Folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Friday's edition of the A-Scene. And we are kicking off with a huge congratulations to my uncle of the industry, Mr. Tyler Perry, who just came out with his first ever Netflix movie. In fact, he had a screening last night in downtown Atlanta, and the movie is called A Fall from Grace. And of course, we were there. But before watching the movie, Perry thanked the audience for their continued support and shared this powerful message. So my hope, my heart, my soul for each and every one of you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, is everything you've done for us, the dreams and the joy that we're experiencing. I don't care what you're going through in your life. I don't care what it is. My hope is that everything that you put out here comes back to you a million fold. Ooh, amen, a message, right? Now that was Perry alongside film star Crystal Fox on that stage. The movie is about a woman who goes through a tumultuous divorce only to find a man who seems to be her knight in shining armor. Then things take a sinister turn. Now I'll be catching up with Perry about the film next week, but be sure to mark your calendars because the film begins streaming on Netflix on January 17th. And finally, speaking of films filmed here in Atlanta, Like a Boss out today. The movie stars Tiffany Haddish, Rose Byrne, Salma Hayek, and Billy Porter. Haddish and Byrne character are living their best lives, running their own cosmetics company as BFFs. Unfortunately, they're in over their heads financially, and the prospect of a big buyout offer from a notorious titan of the cosmetics industry, played by Salma Hayek, sweeps in. And guess what? Atlanta native Jacob Lattimore is also featured in the film Out Today. Hey, thanks, Fran. Well, when you see AC, you know that's my cue to head out and get ready for 11 Alive up late at 11 p.m. We look forward to watching you and Ron and big weekend plans. Uh, no, not so much. Well, I'm going to celebrate my sorority founders day. Alpha oh. Kappa Alpha oh. tomorrow. A lot of friends. A lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, 2,500 people. It's going to be great. And then we're going to hunker down. It's in the morning, so we'll be safe Should be fine. with the storms yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah, all right. Aisha, thank you. Have a great weekend. That great sounds weekend. like a lot more fun than I'm going to have. <laughs> Here's what's coming up on the ATL. A close call. An officer recovering after he was struck by a train. A new body camera video shows the moment that it happened. 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. 
An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here. And that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. DeKalb police are looking into a possible kidnapping attempt after a boy said a man tried to grab his arm as he was walking to the bus. The 12 year old's mother spoke to us tonight and uh, Elwin Lopez has the very latest. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. Not too far from them. It happened near Latchwood Drive and Post Ridge Trail in Lithonia on Thursday morning. His mom says the boy told police a man jumped out of a car and grabbed him by the arm, but he was able to get away and get on the school bus. As soon as that call came through, my, my heart fell in my stomach. I knew I had been feeling that already. I knew something was definitely wrong. And she says her son told her he was able to swat the man and elbow him. Police are still investigating the incident and checking a ring doorbell video in the neighborhood for any leads. Well, you have seen the headlines claiming that Georgia's film tax break have created tens of thousands of jobs here in Georgia. In fact, the state previously put that number to about 92,000 jobs. Now a new report indicates that figure inflated by about a thousand percent, a thousand percent. How did the numbers get so far off? Here's Doug Richards. The audit takes aim at what it describes as overinflated claims about the Georgia film tax credit, the money generated and the number of jobs created. And it focuses on both the economic benefits and the economic costs of the program. Instead of the nine and a half billion dollar economic impact claimed, the report says the real gross benefit was 4.6 billion, but the net benefit was only 2.8 billion once costs were included. Instead of producing 92,000 jobs, the audit says the film industry produced 29,000 jobs. But the audit says the credit also cost the state more than 19,000 jobs from reduced government spending, making the net benefit only 9,100 jobs. The audit also says the state tax credit cost the state nearly $66,000 per job. In a rebuttal, the state economic development department contends the cost per job is only 19,000. It's costing a lot of money no matter what estimate you use, but the estimate that the Georgia Department of Economic Development is using on cost per job makes absolutely no sense. J.C. Bradbury produced a study a few weeks ago similarly critical of the Georgia film tax credit. 
In the new audit, the Department of Economic Development, which oversees the film tax credit, fiercely disputes the findings. The mere fact the film tax credit isn't fiscally positive to the state can't be used to determine the credit isn't beneficial, the department writes in a response included in the audit report. The new state audit also says 88% of the film tax credits went to non-Georgia companies and that most wages used for the credit went to non-residents. Yet the film program remains politically popular. A day ago, House Speaker David Ralston defended it. Would I favor abolishing it? And the answer is an unequivocal no. Because what we have to understand is that at the other end of that tax credit is Georgians working. But not that many Georgians, says Bradbury. And it's largely just making life easier for uh, rich Hollywood producers and actors, not helping Georgians. Well, we are getting a look at the moment a Polk County officer was struck by a train. The department releasing this body camera footage. And take a look. We've stopped it right before the impact. The train slammed into Officer Andy Anderson, knocking him off the tracks. And now he's out of surgery, recovering from broken ribs, elbow, and a shoulder blade. The incident occurred Tuesday while he tried to arrest a man in Rockmart. He heard the train. He just didn't realize how close to the tracks he was. Uh, we, we call that tunnel vision in law enforcement. You get so focused on the task at hand, you forget about your surroundings. And the police department is still looking for a suspect in connection with all of this. Several fishing boats damaged after a fire at a Bass Pro Shop. Crews spent hours trying to contain last night at the Sugarloaf Mills Mall. That's in Gwinnett County off I-85. The mall evacuated for a short time. Investigators still trying to figure out what sparked the blaze. A woman's in the hospital fighting for her life after being shot inside her car. She was found inside the car about 4.30 this morning on Glenwood Road in DeKalb County. Last check, critical condition. That's how she's listed. Officers haven't given us any information on the suspect. Gwinnett County has approved a nearly $2 billion budget for 2020. The funding heavily focused on public safety, transportation, and more funds to accommodate bilingual voters going into the election year. It's also set aside a million dollars to address homelessness. Gwinnett County has a large budget. It's $1.84 billion for one year. That's huge. That's the size of a small country. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of moving pieces here in a county that's so diverse and growing as Gwinnett County. But what I would want citizens to know is that we take providing services to them very seriously, and we want to make sure that we provide superior services to them, and it does take resources. To see a full breakdown of the budget for Gwinnett County, you can head to my Lawrenceville News section on 11alive.com. In the days leading up to his birthday, the King Center is getting ready to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King. The King Center's leadership says this year's theme is the beloved community. The fierce urgency of now the beloved community is part of Dr. King's speech many years ago. And it aims to recognize the inherent worth of all people, even those we may disagree with. Dr. King's daughter, the Reverend Bernice King, said that it is a timely message given how divided the United States is in 2020. Regardless of who's elected into office, we still are citizens of the United States. We're still a part of a human family. We still have issues that were there before that person, and we're going to have these issues after them. And it's going to take all of us to do our part. The King Holiday Observance Weeks start today with a two-day nonviolence workshop at the King Center. The celebrations will end on January 20th. Dr. King would have been 91 this year. There is a voter registration drive underway as well. We have a full list of events, their dates and times. You can find them in the As Seen on TV section on the 11 Alive app. Stay outside. I'll be there about two. Stay outside. Those dramatic moments can be seen in Trigger, an 11 Alive investigation that's been watched hundreds of times, hundreds of thousands of times on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. Jessica Boynton was married to her high school sweetheart, a Griffin police officer, for just six months before she was found locked in a closet, a gunshot wound to the head. The bullets were fired from her husband's service weapon, but who pulled that trigger? Over the last three years, Chief Reveal Investigator Brendan Keefe dug into what really happened, and now he's taking us through all the twists and turns of this strange case in a new podcast. The officer's wife 
launches Monday. You can subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. After you listen, please rate it and post a review. Working to find answers, the U.S. sharing information with the Ukrainian government to assist in the investigation of that deadly Tehran plane crash that occurred earlier in the week. And we're watching that severe threat out to our west tonight, and that is going to be moving in our direction on Saturday. So we'll time, you, time it all out, let you know when to expect the worst of the weather and just how long various threats will be sticking with us. Coming up, Team 1-1 goes to the gym. The son of Dikembe Mutombo has a big game, but he was outdone by another player. Highlights from the hardwood coming up next. Home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. Ah. You're all, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive. Iran is denying it accidentally shot down a Ukrainian plane that crashed outside Tehran, killing all 176 people on board. U.S., Canadian, and British officials said yesterday that intelligence appears to show the plane may have been unintentionally hit by an Iranian missile. The crash occurred hours after Iran fired missiles at bases in Iraq, housing U.S. troops in retaliation for the U.S. airstrike that killed their top general. The U.S. has acknowledged having satellites and 
and sensors in the region where the crash happened, but experts say they may be hesitant to share information because it comes from highly classified sources. Also today, the U.S. announced a new round of sanctions against Iran. At the same time, the president defended the administration's killing of Iran's general Soleimani. Soleimani was actively planning new attacks, and he was looking very seriously at our embassies, and not just the embassy in Baghdad. But we stopped him, and we stopped him quickly, and we stopped him cold. President Trump in Ohio last night making the case for killing General Soleimani. His comments came only hours after the House passed a non-binding resolution limiting the president's power to take future military action against Iran. Joining me right now from Washington is NBC's moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd. And Chuck, what do we make of some Republicans like Rand Paul and Mike Lee criticizing the administration for the briefing on Iran? Is the administration going about it the wrong way? Or perhaps they don't even care, right? Well, I don't know if they care or not. I think they've, I would call it a big missed opportunity politically. And I say it this way, you, you know this well, Jeff, during the uh, debate over the Iran nuclear deal, there was quite a few Democrats who ended up voting against the deal um, that President Obama negotiated. The point being is there was a way, and previous administrations had been better about this, they could have brought in a bipartisan group here a bit, the Gang of Eight even, you know, some form of that. Again, Chuck Schumer, much, much more of a hawk when it comes to Iran than any other entity in the Middle East. So I just think it's the way they went about it. It was a bit ham-handed by the administration, and I look at it as a simple missed opportunity where they, they in, in some ways, they pushed potential allies away. And then they put people who normally might have been more supportive of something like this feeling as if there was just no political space for them to help out. So I, I, perhaps we're too polarized and it doesn't matter. But this administration went out of its way not to inform Congress much. Yeah, That's clear. Congressman Doug Collins from Georgia said, and I'm sort of paraphrasing here, the Democrats love terrorists today. Uh, he, he backstep on that and, and apologizing about it. But I think it illustrates what you're talking about as far as this polarization, which is yeah. unlike anything that we have really seen. I have to say, when I saw Doug Collins do that, the congressman, was, it was just one of those, oh, really? Come on. And I was really heartened that he apologized. Because you know what? That, that, you rarely see that anymore. So, you know, it's funny, a lot of times these guys, you know, we, we, you know, we in the media will surface this stuff and you wonder, are they going to apologize? He did apologize and it wasn't a, he didn't equivocate on it. He just, he said, you know, it was wrong. So he, he, he uh, uh, good for him for at least, you know, stepping up and doing that because so few don't. You know, we put out this hot rhetoric now and it makes you feel good on Twitter because all the people that like you like it and retweet <laughs> it and it reinforces it. Right. And it's just so toxic and terrible. And it does make people, I think, do stupid things in public because they think, that, oh, this works well in social media. It'll work well in the real world. And you're like, no, it doesn't. Yeah, what, what is Twitter? Maybe one, two percent of the American population and it drives everything. You know, it's been interesting, Jeff. We, we, uh, we, we poll this all the time with Twitter, you know. Only 7% of folks, when any of survey was ever done, say they regularly use Twitter. And it's been that way for four years in a row. They've had no growth. Facebook, on the other hand, people are on Facebook. Yeah. The people, they're not on the Twitter. Hey, but I'll tell you what, Twitter's driving the engine of politics and a lot of pop culture in this country, that's for sure. Drives the engine of our conversation some days, that's for it, sure, it sure, which does. is probably too many of our colleagues go on Twitter and provide the fuel. Yeah, no kidding. Meet the Press airs Sunday morning at 10 here on 11 Alive. Chuck, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Well, most of our showers have been on the light side so far this evening, and we're starting to see a few more popping up here, especially in Troop County, Heard County, up in Carroll County, and those will be heading into the Atlanta area within the next 30 minutes or so. Humidity also on the rise, and that's indicated by the rising humidity numbers, rising dew point numbers and that southerly flow bringing in a little bit of moisture. So anticipate seeing a few more showers developing in the overnight hours and as you head out tomorrow. But the real storms aren't going to be moving in until the afternoon hours. And right now that line of storms is stretched from St. Louis down into the Houston area. In fact, we have a couple of tornado watches in place. The newest one is over the Houston metropolitan area with a tornado warning here on the west side. 
uh, northwest Houston. So we're going to continue to watch this moving in our direction tonight. They have an enhanced chance, a level four out of five here from East Texas over to the Mississippi River Valley. It should weaken a little bit as it heads in our direction, but still they're in the enhanced area here. Number three out of five. Uh, here in uh, Alabama and in West Georgia tomorrow, but that's what they had in Houston and they had a tornado watch in place. So the chances are good that we could see some severe storms and could see some tornadoes as well as gusty damaging winds. Some of those could be long track tornadoes and it's going to be the sustained winds. I can't even say that now sustained winds that could wreak havoc as we head through the day tomorrow as well, bringing trees down. Winds are picking up here in Rome and winds are going to be the main problem for everyone. Not everyone's going to see a severe thunderstorm. Not everyone is going to see a tornado but all of us are going to be impacted by this gusty wind as we head in through the day tomorrow. Temperatures will be mild just like they were today. Today we made it into the mid 60s. 66 was our high temperature, 14 degrees above average and the next 12 hours staying mild as the rain chances increase into the first part of Saturday. So here comes the timing for you here while the showers are on the light side. They will be picking up as far as being more widespread first thing in the morning and a little more intense. We're going to put a QR code here on the bottom of your screen and that code, if it appears, you can aim. Thank you very much. You can aim your camera at it and it will take you to the 11 Alive app and you can set your notifications as to um, severe thunderstorms and a tornado warning so you can be informed as these storms move in tomorrow afternoon. If you lose power, you can at least have it on your phone. So as we head into the afternoon, the showers pick up that line moves in late in the afternoon early evening continues to move across from west to east at a rapid pace then it kind of slows down later in the evening and inflicts its gusty winds in Athens stretching down into Eatonton in the late evening hours and that should scoot out overnight we should see improving conditions but then the frontal system itself stalls out in South Georgia and comes back up at us for Sunday night Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and it will route a lot of rain coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of moisture. It'll tap into rich Gulf moisture and we'll have rain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So tomorrow we're showery and windy, severe chance late in the day. Sunday a bit of a break as we clear it out for a bit and then heavy rain moves in Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Sports time. It was only a few years ago the Hawks and the Wizards met in the second round of the playoffs, how times have changed. Now the teams are a combined 35 games under 500 as they met in the nation's capital. Things look good for a while for the Hawks. John Collins with another double double 15 points and 15 boards. The Hawks took a six point lead into the fourth quarter, but the Wizards went on a 23 to 10 run. Hawks didn't have any answer. Trey Young 19, but he went 0 for 7 on three pointers. Washington a winner. 111 to 101 tough times for the Hawks organization in this season of 2019 2020 high school basketball from our friends at born to compete pace and love it when you play love it you have to deal with Ryan Matumbo Dikembe's son wearing number 21 standing six feet ten a big block shot then follows a miss with a putback 31 points for Mr. Matumbo but pace got a big night from Matt Cleveland he had 42 including this big jam love it comes back with a big three from Josh Joshi. Pace too much led by Matt Cleveland. 84 71 the final. Pace gets the win in Lovett's gym. We're moving on. Uh, we're trying to just keep going. Bigger games ahead of us. Just keep building, building all the way to state championship. One college football game left. The championship game Monday night. Trevor Lawrence from Cartersville and the Clemson Tigers have touched down in New Orleans. Clemson is a prohibitive underdog. We've heard that before. Coach Dabo Swinney will probably remind all of us all weekend long. A shorter trip for LSU. Those Tigers made the 98 mile track from Baton Rouge to New Orleans. By the way, the university canceled all classes Monday and Tuesday because of the game. That, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the worst Ed Ogeron impressions you will hear in the next 72 hours. While you're waiting for football on Monday, check out Atlanta's newest sports team on Sunday. Rugby ATL plays its first match, a preseason game against New Orleans at Life University in Marietta. Major League Rugby, a 12-team league with the regular season starting in February. The team has players from Atlanta and New Zealand. 
Having a pro team um, in this area, I think, is, is great for the game. You know, it's, it's growing the fan base, it's getting people excited. You know, um, Atlanta's had rugby, but Atlanta hasn't had a rugby team, which I think is, is going to be a big game changer in terms of growth for the sport in the area. Hope it grows. It looks like fun. The weather forcing UGA's basketball game at Auburn to move up to noon. It was scheduled for 6 p.m. Saturday, Tim. That is sports. We'll be right back. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. No, 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 You can assume Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. I've got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chester. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne and Associates. Okay, it's going to be an interesting weekend to yeah. say the least. Mm. You'll want to spend your time inside tomorrow yes. afternoon and evening. Football may be a good option to watch on TV if we can keep power because we're going to have gusty winds that could bring a lot of power lines down. And also we have that tornado risk into the afternoon and evening hours. Good news is it'll be out of here for Sunday. We can be on cleanup patrol and then it looks very wet next week. And our team has it completely covered. You guys are everywhere. Yeah, we will be wall to wall if necessary, keeping you informed. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching us, we appreciate it. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike.
You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm